Yes, love will come through on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, etc. Got some, uh, great tunes actually lined up. Excellent. I've brought in, uh, some Amy Mann, some, uh, uh, Neil Young. I'm playing my favourite Clash track. What have you, what have you got for us, Steve? I got a dynamite, uh, hip hop tune by yeah. The Roots, which I think you enjoy. Love it, um, love it. Got a little bit of, uh, Joni Mitchell. Maybe just swing that on oh. later. Oh. And, and, um, I knew you brought in some Johnny Mitchell, it's a uh, good job I didn't. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't have made any difference. It wouldn't have made any difference. No, you, we, we, we you'd have played, probably played yeah. yours and yeah. I'd have been told to... Go away. Go away. Uh, Carl, what have you got lined up for us as the producer? <laughs> Alright, well, uh, uh, Rockbusters. Been Excellent. off this week again. Has he? Yeah. Another yeah, week off? Another week off, yeah. 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 No, I didn't have a full week off. I had three days off yeah. because I was working all over Christmas. Yeah. And, uh, still didn't stop working, preparing stuff. <laughs> You've got a nice load of prizes there that yeah, I've sorted out. I had to come in especially to sort that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Rockbusters. Did you rifle continue. through the drawers up at Capital Gold instead of Daily? Yeah. 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 Uh, Rockbusters were still doing that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're picking it up. Yeah. He's picking it up. <laughs> yeah. Still doing that. <laughs> We've got that. Uh, last week, um, we sort of changed educating Ricky a bit. Um, just a little don't bit. say we, I don't want to be incriminated in it. Well, yeah. well, changed it in a sense that rather than giving you too much information about different things, it's hard to sort of keep it all in. Yeah. I'm giving you sort of information on one thing, so yeah. that's last No, because some of your stuff was a little bit too intense with that. And that, that, that. My favourite story was there was a blind girl, she hit her head and got better, and I couldn't take all that in at once. <laughs> yeah. So you should really ration well, some we, of the we education. Sort of, we sort of sort of last you. week, um, war-related, uh, stories. Yeah, it was, uh, war, do you think of that then? War, and it was the sure. three things. And it was the French, um, battle, uh, going over the top was, John's got a moustache. <laughs> which you think was ambiguous, because someone might have said that anyway. A lot you've remembered it. So it's working. So yeah. we're doing that, and, and last week Loads you said- Loads of French people have just gone to war who were oh. listening to this. Yeah. You, uh, you said you wanted to learn some science this week. Did so, I? Yeah. <laughs> so, so the title this week for that is, Acid, I would sort you some science out. <laughs> Acid. Acid, cause that's- How long did that take you to call Listen, you? but you know, um, look, people- People love Carl. There's comedians coming to me and go, Carl's the funniest man. They, they absolutely yeah. love him, right? But I think we're only seeing half of it, right? Mm. Uh, if we can get him on television, his face then, when he's told me that title, was like a child at Christmas. Yeah. It was, it was, he was so proud of it, he was excited what I was gonna, it was brilliant. It's a bit like when a child's drawn a picture in art class, you you know you've got to stick it on the fridge, you got but to, you basically yeah. think it's crap. Yeah, yeah. It's very much like that. <laughs> Alright, Carl? Is that good? Yes. So, we'll be doing that. Do we need them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... Have you got another one? Yeah, I've got another one. Looking at, uh, snails. Oh, yeah. Do we yeah. need snails? Do we okay, need snails? Because I know you're not a fan of snails, are you? Well, after a bit of research, I found some good stuff out about, um, like, they sleep for 13 years, some of them. Yeah. And that. So we'll be looking <laughs> into that later. you tried that one. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. We've got Ritual. <laughs> Ritual, yeah, yeah, which is something that I tell you about. Yeah, well, last week's was brilliant. What it's was good it? to have a flathead in India. <laughs> it's good to have a flathead in India. That's I've got brilliant. That. Yeah. And well, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just play one of my favourite Smith tracks. Can I just uh, make a request? So I'd quite like if you know if we've got time to bring back um, just for one week only White Van Carl. Sure. Because there's some quite interesting topics this week. Oh, is there things happening in the world? There's because some Carl's things happening. There is. <laughs> there is a light that never goes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone's left one of those little things in here. It's brilliant, it's isn't it? It's amazing. What are they called, those things? <laughs> I just, I was just there, just there, I was thinking of being in the front row at a Morrissey concert and going, oh, I'll just, can I just play along? <laughs> <laughs> they are brilliant. I uh, don't know what kind of sound that is. I don't know. <laughs> it's only used for when Kenneth Williams <laughs> yeah, exactly. sees someone <laughs> undressing. <laughs> Yeah. That's the only time that yeah. is used, that noise. <laughs> exactly. That is brilliant. But it's like it was specially created for the Carry On films. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need- I don't know what it is, but we need something when I walk in and see someone changing. Well, what about this? <laughs> there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Um, I phoned, uh, Carl up in the week, yeah, and, uh, I said, uh, what are you doing? He went, well, even though it's one of my days off, I'm just doing some research on the web. When the family thing said, yeah, I'm doing science. And then he said, you can get wigs for dogs in Tokyo. <laughs> That's his scientific fact. Yeah. And I went, 
What do you mean? You, you, dogs, if they need a wig? I said, if they need a wig, what? Dogs going <laughs> bald? And he went, like, this is fine to him, he went, it's a stressful city, Tokyo. <laughs> the world's <laughs> alright with Carl. He's always got an explanation. <laughs> I've only ever seen him confused once. When, in Edinburgh, he looked out of his window one day and he saw a bloke putting a parking ticket on some rubbish. Yeah. And that genuinely confused him. Yeah. He couldn't work out, could you? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> The and, the ba and the woman breastfeeding her eight-year-old child, didn't, you didn't like, did you? I don't like that. But, um, the what's the name? Animals with wigs. I kind of thought, after I put the phone down to you, I kind of <laughs> thought about it, thought, yeah, it was a bit daft, that. Are you sure he's not the, uh, the ageing pop group? No. The animals. But when you think, have you ever seen, like, a bald pet? No. The, the, it's weird. <laughs> what do you mean? Because my mum, um, we had a cat, we used to get through loads of cats because we lived there. <laughs> It's only ten past one! What are you doing? Running a restaurant? Oh god, what do you mean? No, we lived on like a main road. Oh yeah. So we used to get through a lot of them. It was there is. You know, stop wasting money, you know, it's not good. Stop wasting money, not wasting cats! Right, so um, anyway, we had this cat that was ill all the time. And uh... It's just bag of noobs, probably. Yeah, Melingra! Yeah, I'm terrified. I'm going to witch house. Wrong. Oh god, bloody hell. Wrong. Don't let me go to the Pilkingtons. And for some reason it kept being sick all the time. Yeah, that is noobs, that's definitely noobs. So my mum, so, kind of thought oh, I've had enough of this and she shaved it. What? Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Now I know, I know you're not vets in your family, but what correlation did your mum think there was between you being sick and shaving it? Because it kept being sick and it was a pain to wash because it kept getting So cold. she wanted a dry wipe cat. So, <laughs> why didn't she just varnish it? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's weird, it's weird. It's so, so, now, so now he's cold and sick? No, but you, no, not, I mean, not all of it, she left sort of the back half, but sort of from, from its waist, sort of- I love that shaving because it's sick on itself! Yeah. And, that uh, is it's, it was the weirdest looking thing, I mean, no, normally I like cats, I'm always like giving yours a stroke on the head and that. Yeah. But as soon as she did that, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can't touch it. And then- So now it's sick, cold and hated. Yeah. I love, I, I, Carl. It must have, I mean, uh, the other cats must have been taking the mick out of it constantly. It's just making things worse. Did it get, I'm hoping that it got run over and was put out of its misery. No, I think it, I think it got alright, that one. Or is that the, <laughs> yeah, it did get run over. <laughs> <laughs> it did, ah! Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. How many cats do you say you've got through? I'd say when I, whilst I was living at home, I mean, it's, it's still on the increase even though I'm not there. <laughs> so, uh, whilst, whilst I was there, probably five. Oh, God. Where? Oh. Yeah. And were you upset each time or you just got used to it? It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? Like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. Yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the, f the, the, the first? Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, then you get used to how people look and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You... I'm gonna pass. Oh, you got to play a record. No, but... Cause I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got used to it. Shut up. Shut up. Let you down. Gold Rush on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington. Brilliant. Rick, so I was in, uh, uh, I don't know whether I should tell you this because it might rock you to the very core. Go on. But I was in an Indian restaurant the other night and, uh, I don't, you've not seen the film, have you seen the film Notting Hill? I haven't, no. Right, in the film Notting Hill, have you seen that, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Do you remember the bit, uh, Julia Roberts plays uh, a movie star, rather like She's the most famous movie, yeah. yeah, I know. And she's yeah. in a restaurant having dinner with, uh, uh, Hugh Grant and she overhears some people in the restaurant slagging her off and saying, oh, yeah. you know, she's a slapper, probably all actors are, all actresses are. And, uh, she's sort of stewing on it and, uh, Hugh Grant wants to say something and she says, no, I won't, I won't let you. And, and then as she's walking out, she goes and says something to them and of course their faces drop, they can't believe it's her. And you know, I was in, uh, in an uh, Indian restaurant the other night and they were slagging you off, Rick. Mm. Well, they were saying, well, they were saying is they were going, oh, Ricky Jones, the thing about Ricky Jones is he's just like the character he plays. Right. He's just like David Brent in real life. And I was listening in and I was thinking, well, I want to say something. 
I want to go over and have a word and say, you know, you're, you're partially right. <laughs> but, uh, but I couldn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, I didn't know what to say. I, I couldn't, what can I do? I couldn't really go over there and get into a rumble. I want to say, what do you mean that I'm yeah. like him? I, I use his face and his vocal cords, mm. but I mean, I, I can't help that. I, but it's that thing as well of, I don't know where they've got this information from. But, no, 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 no. Because no, you're no, not, it's, so it's they're wrong. Well, it's, so it's, 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 yeah, they've received it from somewhere, or they've, they've read it or something. It's, it's just, I, I, but I don't know, I mean, I can't really be annoyed that they're just wrong. But it it's, was very it's, weird. It's like, it, it's like being annoyed at a vicar believing in God. I can't get annoyed with him. Mm. I just don't believe. But because obviously they didn't recognise me, it's rather like, you know when they talk about that idea that if you could go to your funeral, what would people yeah. be saying about you? It's yeah. the closest you could get to that. You, 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 you can hear what people are saying about your friends. But why don't you, um, to g get around to the guy, you go, he is, yeah. What do you think of the other fella that's sometimes <laughs> with him? Yeah. That tall fella, he's good, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. It's, it's a shame actually because, um, on the occasions I do get recognised from minor appearances, um, I'd never get any cool fans. I just get the nerds. I get the real nerdlingers. I don't get, you know, <laughs> beautiful women coming out. You're putting out. them off, though. Putting them off. You've got to take what you can. Well... So, but you'll have nothing. No, I know, but this girl came out the other day and she said to her, Hey, are you that guy who's involved with the office? I went, oh, yes, I am. She went, my boyfriend loves you. He's over here. And she pointed him out. I was uh -huh. devastated. I thought, I'm in here. Yeah. There was nothing. There was nothing going on. But there was a guy who was in HMV, and he was working with the T. He'd been working on the till, and he saw me. He said, uh, would you sign this DVD? I went, oh, no problem, me. I said, and I was trying to make conversation. I was just trying to be frothy. And I said to him, oh, selling well, is it? And he <laughs> went, it is, it is. Although we've had quite a lot of returns. <laughs> I said, well, don't tell me that. I what, know that. What did he mean? That they didn't like and it? I said, I said, what? You, people have been bringing no, it back. No, I think it's he glitches. Went, he, went, I, he said, they've been bringing it back. I said, what was the problem? He said, they didn't really like it. No! Yeah, they, some of them didn't really like it. You can give it back if you don't like yeah, it. No, I mean, I don't know whether they gave him the money back, but certainly that's what he dealt with. That's what he'd encountered. And then I he mean, said, we didn't give the money back, they just wanted to drop it off. What, they didn't even <laughs> want the money back? <laughs> yeah, they just wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't, they didn't want it in the house. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want this rubbish in the <laughs> house. Oh, but we still get the money for it, do we? We still get the money, but Brilliant. you know, I told you that Brilliant. other time. Again, because I'm, pe people don't recognise me, again, I was in a record shop, there was a stack of office videos, and this guy went by, and I sort of heard them as they went by, he went, oh, office, yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people like that. I think it's shit, he's made one, I agree. Really? And, and of course, again, I was like, what could I do? I couldn't say anything. I couldn't pipe up and go, well, that's sort of... Well, I, I, like the, I like these, the fact that you're always hearing these loud vocals. Yeah. It, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Great. What's the chance of that? I, <laughs> that's brilliant. Maybe, well, that, maybe it, everyone's because... always slagging it off. But it's part that's of it. it. Yeah, that's part of it, but also yeah. because I keep stand, hanging out by stacks of office <laughs> DVDs. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Wearing a t-shirt with a picture of you and me on. <laughs> Yeah, that'd do it. What have we got to play, Carl? Something Steve wants. Well, actually, um, I must uh, dedicate this to uh, someone who's emailed in. I mentioned earlier that I was going to play some of the Roots, and Joe from Peterborough is very excited about that. So, uh, this is not from the current Roots album, sadly, which I've not fully absorbed yet, and therefore don't feel I can make a decision on which track to play, but maybe that'll come That's uh, the sort of in the future. and thought we put into our, you know, picking music. Exactly. I had these cassettes in my bag from last week. <laughs> sure. Anyway, this is from the album Things Fall Apart. It's the Roots <laughs> featuring Erica Badu. You got me. Let's play it. Erica Badu, that's The Roots, and You Got Me. Good, I like that one. Yeah, you've enjoyed that? Yeah, I love it, yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's coming up to 1.30, and so it's time for Rockbusters. <laughs> it's a structured show, it's a new leaf. This show, in the new year, is gonna be structured. Set pieces, um, hitting our marks, do you know what I mean? There'll be time checks, uh, uh, weather checks, <laughs> Rick hold out, um, if you, if you, if you're driving, careful on that. <laughs> so, do the prizes. Time check for traffic, like, yeah, if it's bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, again, an arbitrary selection of, uh, goodies. What are those politicians doing? <laughs> Was that XFM News? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, what have we got? So we've got, uh, for those that are a fan of the movie Donnie Darko, which a lot of people rave about this year, a sort of weird teenage movie, then, uh, there's a sort of, uh, sweatshirt there. It is actually quite nice. It's not bad at all. It's, uh, it's medium, so if you, if you're a bit of a bloater, <laughs> don't bother to apply, unless you've got a friend already. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've also got here, um, a Graham Norton video. Certificate 18. Oh, that's <laughs> so, that was... please don't phone up unless, or, sorry, don't email in unless you're above the age of 18. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, the best of his TV show. Yeah. Look forward to that. It's um, a big stiff video, that, isn't it? It's a big <laughs> stiff cock of a video. <laughs> Thanks oh, very much. I meant you the- Yeah, you yeah. meant the bird. Yeah. 
Um, there's also a fairly mediocre British wartime thriller, <laughs> Enigma, um, which a lot of people, it was hyped for a while, but it's actually interminable. I've seen it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, first series here of The Kumars at number 42 on DVD. I think that's award winning, so, uh, that's available as well. We've got two CDs by the look of it. We've got, uh, Pulp's Greatest Hits, which I don't think sold very well. And so presumably they are giving that away. <laughs> and Johnny Cash's, um, current, uh, album, uh, American For The Man Comes Around, there's some good cover versions there. Again, another big sell. A big yeah. sell. We're really pushing um, this. But it, it, yeah, it's a quite kooky. Uh, Johnny Cash here does covers of things including Personal Jesus. All oh, right. By Depeche Mode. Right, yeah. uh, we've got Bridge Over Troubled Water, his version of that. <laughs> Desperado. <laughs> And, uh, anyway, so it's not bad, that's probably the best treat in that bunch. And, right. Uh, I'm assuming there's some questions there, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Right, here we uh, go. If you're a new listener, the way it works, I'll give you a cryptic clue and some wow. initials and it sort of makes up a band. Yeah. Um, makes more sense when you hear it, I reckon. Not particularly. Well, not really. Although so, people do get it, I just worry about the, the state of our listeners. <laughs> go on. Right, so there's three of them, you email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. It's email only, I email repeat, only. it is email only. We're not too email lazy <laughs> to answer the phone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. here we go then, number one. Um, there's, there's normally two easy ones and a difficult one. Sure. So here we go. Uh, number one, don't argue with him, he ain't gonna change his mind. Don't argue with him, he ain't gonna change his mind. Yeah, that's AA. AA. That's, yeah. So that's Don't the first one. He's not going to change his mind. Um. What do you mean, um? You just, just got them written out of Yeah, you? I'm just thinking about what the answer is, so they don't write the answer down to Oh, for. God. Don't worry, they'll get it. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Well, um, do you, yeah. well, you can't remember it. You came up with it. There's only three. No, I know it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not weird. It's incompetent. <laughs> right, the second one. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you get this. Um. <laughs> I hope you get this. <laughs> you rather than tell us the answer. <laughs> this is a shambles. Hang on a minute. Keep going. Go on. He always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. <laughs> and you don't know, you don't know that is. It'll, I'm sure it'll come to me once I see it on email. If, if what I'll do you mean? It. Once they get it, you'll agree with them. I'll know if it's the one I had down as the answer. This is brilliant. Come Imagine on, Jeremy Paxman doing that. Going, yeah, you've got time. Is that right? <laughs> Go on. Right. So uh, that's give that us, one. Give us that one again. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. But you're confused. I don't understand how you can be confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's the third one? The third one, uh, one, I'll have to put that woman in the oven. And that's A, B. Alright, quickly give us them again. Right, so the first one, don't argue with him, he ain't, he ain't gonna change his mind. That's A, A. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P. And, um, I'll have to put that woman in the oven. A, B. Alright, okay. ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm gonna play a classic track now by uh, Neil Young, Alabama. It's oh, beautiful. beautiful people. Neil Young, Alabama. Uh, Carl is still confused, he's waiting, he's biting his fingers, waiting for an email to tell him the answer to the clue he made up but can't get. <laughs> I love that as an experiment. As a psych- I mean, that would confuse psychologists that you come up with something that you can't get. It's brilliant. Yeah, you came up with the question, you don't know the answer. And you expect them to, but you can't and you made it up. Look at your face, I can feel- play some adverts. Honestly, Juan by uh, Billy Corgan's new band there. Um, X Smashing Pumpkins. Mm -hmm. Sounds a bit like them, but yeah. I like it. It's alright, not bad. I like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I'm excited to know, Rick, incidentally, cool. that someone's got the right answer. So, uh, Carl really knows the answer, yeah. Brilliant. Well done, <laughs> Carl. You're a fool. <laughs> right. Well, um, talking of which, <laughs> it's a long time since we've had any white van Carl. For those that uh, don't remember this particular hot feature, um, yeah. we basically ask Carl some of the questions that are asked of a white van driver in the sun. They always have this on Saturday afternoons. Anyway, here's the first one. Uh, they're not fascinating, Carl, but I'm just interested on in your take, really. Yeah. What do you make of Scylla Black quitting Blind Date after her husband sent a message from beyond the grave? Are you familiar know, with this story? I didn't story? know that. What's, yeah. what's that? She went to see a medium and uh, supposedly her husband passed on information through the medium which was incredibly vague but um, persuaded her to quit live on air. Well, 
It's about, it's about time, isn't it? If even dead people are saying... <laughs> uh, enough's enough. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, though, talking Genius. about, talking about ghosts and that, do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. yeah. Right? How weird do you think this is, right? Well, it's not true. Before you say it, <laughs> play the record. No, go on, go on. <laughs> go on. Right, it's this woman. <clears throat> oh, I don't yeah. even know if it's ghost, really, it's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. Right? Sure. There's this woman, yeah. and she's... Well, she's not a woman, she's a kid. Sure. <laughs> okay. Sure. She's, she's walking down, like, a, a street in her area, it's a nice day and everything, everything's normal. Um, she's walking down, and a woman comes up, cycling past, right? The woman on the bike looks at the kid absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it, goes, you know, I think she was playing in the park or whatever, goes and has a nice day. About... Fifteen years later, oh right, yeah. She's, I don't know. I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She's riding her own bike, riding okay. her own bike, cycling down the road. Oh yeah. Looks at the kid. That's the thing that happened like fifteen, twenty years ago. Right. It's her on the bike, looking at her as a kid. Right. Not, you... not, not another child. No. So right. it's her. She's seen right, herself. Uh, what, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I. I don't know where to start. Firstly, where's this information come from? But I mean, wh why do you ever con I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I- I don't- I- I- I mean, honest, I'm- oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> bit, bit weird though, isn't it? <laughs> but it's not true. It didn't happen, nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, Who? she's Who? wrong. She said she saw herself. She saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she come and, on uh, and as an adult when she was a kid? <laughs> did she stop and talk to herself, or did she ride on by and think that's a bit weird? There's me as an eight-year-old. <laughs> I won't stop. I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm late again, the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. Oh. Well, if, and where is this information? Was it did it happen to someone you know? No. You overheard it on the bus. No, it was in the uh, it's in the fourteen times. Oh right. Well, uh, okay. That's the answer. Good. We've okay. gone to the bottom of that. Right. Good. Um. <laughs> Brilliant. Now what do you make of David Blunkett accusing gangster rappers of making kids believe guns are cool? It's a hot topic there, Carl, and I imagine you've got some, uh, strong opinions. He's- he's saying what? He is saying, basically, that all this rap music is, uh, advocating gun use and violence against people, and he's very worried about it. Nah. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Have you thought about going into politics? Because. <laughs> I, go I'll tell you this, they wouldn't be able to argue with you, really, in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, they don't, no, where, where would they start? Yeah. My very <laughs> fellow, he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, violence has always been about, hasn't it, like cowboys and Indians, they didn't have playstations and two-pack then, and there was still violence. What do you mean? In the Wild West? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you can't really blame it on stuff, it, it'll always happen, that's, you know, that's the world, isn't it? It's made up of different types and that. Again, he's right. Again, he's, he's sort of right, in a way, in his, in his innocence, in his buffoonery. I didn't hear what it's, he said. He just said there's always been violence, you know what I mean? It's sort Even, of like, you know, dinosaurs, look at them. They, they caused a lot of And then he went too far and made himself yeah. <laughs> sound like a fool again. But I'm just saying, it's always happened, it always will. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't try and change it. Yeah, yeah. just chill out is what you're saying. Do you know, uh, do you know what we should do? We should, we should all get on our bike, go and find ourselves when we're little and go, be careful what you do in life. <laughs> Oasis, Supersonic, still good, still as good as ever. Still good, on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You'll be pleased, Rick. Go on. Ricky Anderson has, uh, emailed him. Dickers! Dickers, Danderson. Oh, yeah, what are you doing, uh, Dindo? He, he's, uh, he's probably our, uh, biggest fan. Um, diddler, you little diddler! <laughs> exactly. He has emailed in, as ever. Ricky, your show fascinates me. How do you maintain such levels of senseless drivel? <laughs> That's from, uh, from Randers, from Randy Anders. Little diddle diddle diddles! <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, uh, thanks again, uh, um, Dudley. Dudley. Yep. Uh, well done, he's, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, nice I get a buzz. I, I, I was disappointed last week where he didn't, what, what, ask him why he's, uh, didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't last respond last week, no, it's a shame. Probably busy. Yeah. I don't believe he had something better to do. Well, I wouldn't have also. I can't believe that of anyone. No. <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> no, you've got this sort of level. Exactly. Uh, intense chat. What have you done this, uh, week, Carl? Well, I've had a, uh, got a few days off, haven't I? 
Yeah, still, you know, doing stuff for this show and that, but <laughs> managed to put a few really. hours in. Yeah, uh, really. just just doing doing nothing and uh, bought a place. I was I was looking at kitchens. Yeah, weighing some of them up and yeah. uh, checking them out. Checking them out and uh, also ordered a sofa. Yeah, nice sort of comfy sort of le leatherish mm -hmm. sofa. Oh, a leatherish. Oh, I don't I don't like leather sofas. I don't, no, I don't... yeah, but what are you picturing? A leather um, sofa. A leather sofa. Yeah, I just, like, I just squeaky and it's- No, it's, this isn't. This isn't, isn't it? No, this isn't like that. But I want- I want a really old, sinky, yeah. dainty fabric. I want- I want a sofa that is as comfortable as a bed. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Well, if it was acceptable, you'd have a bed in your lounge, <laughs> yeah. If that was allowed, yeah. without seeming With, like you were sort of, like, elderly. <laughs> Or That'd be good, and I'd have I'd have a drip going in, yeah, sort of like with nutrients. You know, I, I can't be bothered to chew now. No, you can't, lager, yeah. sort of lager with sort of uh, uh, vitamins, vitamins, and then in. and then one going from the knob down to the toilet to the lower trunk, uh, yeah. and with all the remote controls, and mm. I, uh, that would be amazing. To be fair, you're almost there, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. certainly seen the toilet tubing. <laughs> <and laughs> <I've been laughs> right my dad's bed, right? My dad would never change his chair. Well, and would try and get rid of it because it it would just fit to him, and it'd just be absolutely dilapidated, right? And what, he's like he's got, he had like his own chair in the lane. Yeah, his yeah. own chair, right? And then uh, uh, and his bed, right? When uh, they had separate rooms towards the end, um, and his bed, right? It was just it had it for years, and it was a big dip. It really? was just like a spoon in the middle, where it's just it was concave. Where it's like, wow. and my mum <laughs> used to just vacuum it out. Oh, where all the little bits are like you know he'd have a fag in bed or he'd do his roll ups in bed. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> oh, that's he said to him, "What? Why do you like that bed? It's curved. You, you, you know, he goes, he goes. It means I can't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It was like <laughs> in a hammer. <laughs> that's great. That can't uh, be good for his back. Well, I don't think it matters." Towards the end, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, a, a hammock would be I, I, I really yeah. would love a, a hammock. I think a big bean bag would be good, wouldn't it? With a telly. A, a bean bag as big as a bed would be amazing. Yeah, but this is still the telly thing, because uh, do you prop yourself up a little bit to watch it? Do you watch it on the side, which is annoying? Do you turn the telly on the side? That's always, I've always wondered about that. The, we the weird thing is, right, you know, I've mentioned before about certain things that are just right, like your hand. Five fingers is is just enough, mm. right? <laughs> one more, the sex tips. It ruins stuff. Yeah, well, one less. One less than you, you know, saying about drying your pots and that'd be really slippery and that. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the weird thing is, right? I think that's na what nature had in, in <laughs> quite. No, yeah. but like like um, my, my mum and dad, right? They moved to this little like little house, right? And um, they had loads of furniture that they collected over the years without chucking out, and they've moved to this small house, so they just had. Too much furniture, right? Mm. And uh, they had this double bed, and that was for like you know when friends come round and that they can stay there. But the problem was he wanted to sort of put these wardrobes in the bedroom, right? Right. That went on either side of the bed, sort of wrapped around. Because, the bed, yeah, yeah, but because the room was so small, he thought I can sort that out. Yeah. Right. And he sawed the bed. He sawed the bed. He sawed the whole thing, so you've got like your mattress, your bed. And everything. And what, he just sliced some off? Like a big sandwich, just c cut just, a bit off the Just cut, cut the crust how, off. How much is that, would you say? About eight inches, six About eight inches. inches. But hold on, but that well, won't work. Because it'll all fall out the side, and then what happened to the springs and all the supports and stuff? He, he it'll just collapse. It, it, didn't, it didn't all come out and that. I mean, it's not the comfiest bed, <laughs> but, but the weird thing is, he did it, and even though it's only like that eight inches or whatever, it totally ruined it. It's yeah. Like, well, of course it would. No, but what do you think I mean? I don't mean it ruined it as in it looks a mess. No, it would have been uncomfortable. Not even that though, just the fact it's that little bit shorter. It's like, God, for two people this is this is hard work now. This is like, you haven't got enough room, even though it's only eight inches. Why did he, why did he build the wardrobes first? Is that <laughs> measuring, putting the... I think he did all that and then thought, oh, it'll easily fit in there and it didn't, so he had to sort of saw a bit off the bed. <laughs> it's just weird how only eight did inches... Did he use an electric, one of those electric saws? Yeah. And That's there was amazing. just, presumably there was just kind of what sort of material and wood just flying everywhere. What did he do oh, with the legs? Did he have to move the legs in moved, a bit? He moved the legs. Looking at it, right, once it's got like the, the quilt on it and everything, you wouldn't know. I was like, sure. yeah, that's alright, done a good job. Yeah. And I went to bed at night, he's like, you know, sleep well. Got up in the morning after having about 45 minutes sleep and said, something not right with that. Yeah. And you goes, really you are mean? your father's son, aren't you? Something <laughs> <laughs> not right with that. it's not right. And he said, oh, well, I said, what have you done? It doesn't seem the same. And he said, oh, I had to shorten it sort of thing, you mm. know, to fit in the gap. 
I said, well, I can't sleep in it. I said, that, and there was a big <coughs> kerfuffle. My mum was saying, look, you have our bed then, and we'll sleep in that one. Mm. And my dad was like, sod that. Yeah. Yeah, it's ruined. You know. <laughs> some, some idiot cut it. <laughs> so, uh, there was a big debate going on about where we should sleep, and I was saying, look, you know, I only come and see you, like, every couple of, you know, probably once can every I, six months. I'm not being funny, but next time we go home, can I film it? Mm. Just for, I mean, Channel 4 or something. Well, uh, you know, I mean, the Osbournes is not on at the moment. The yeah, Pilkingtons. Be... Uh, that would be extraordinary. Oh, oh, can we film it? Ho <laughs> ho That's brilliant. Is anyone from Channel 5 listening to this show? Or oh, Bravo. <laughs> yeah. The Pilkingtons. Weird though. Weird. Play a record? What do you want to play? Do you want to play, uh, do you fancy playing something of yours? Uh, what, have we got anything? I don't know, something that was sent in to you maybe? Oh yeah, no, I'll tell you, yeah, I'd like to play this. Yeah, Bronze Age Fox. Uh, band from Bristol, my neck of the woods. Always uh, working, the Carl, the always working, he's always tune. working, he's on the ball, he's on the ball, he's on the bobby ball. <laughs> Scientist X104.9, I'm Richard Jamesman, this is Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Carl, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's how you spoke. <laughs> <laughs> right, what are you doing then? Uh, let's have a quick uh, reprise, if we could, of the, uh, of the Rockbusters clues. Yeah, Rockbusters, if you've just tuned in, you've missed it this week. Uh, if you three well, no, you haven't. That's why we're giving the clues again. Yeah, I know, but if they haven't. Eh? What? Yeah, say if they've been busy. Just, just give the clues again. <laughs> um, oh, first one. Oh, God. Um, don't argue with him, because he, he isn't going to change his mind. That's AA. <coughs> Second one, um, he always gets what he, uh, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P. Yeah. And the third and final one, oh, uh, I might have to put that woman in the oven. AB. Interesting. Are we telling him or still- No, 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 no yeah. people have still got a chance to win those extraordinary prizes, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. We've still got them. features to come though, Steve, it's Go incredible. On. We've still got- Ritual. Where, like, remember last time, people in India, it's good to have a flat head. <laughs> yeah. We've got, do we need them? Mm. I've got, that's ridiculous. That's a great game. What should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. Will we, uh, get, do we need them out of the way? Let's get, get do we need them out of the way? Yeah, just, uh, let's, get, uh, let's explain it again. If you're new, um, I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out, you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do we need them all? <laughs> <laughs> so we found out we've got to keep jellyfish. We've done octopus. Yeah. So we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? Just doing some research, uh -huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not. Right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? What, um, sea snails? Well, yeah. Snails in general. Um, I don't know much about snails, land snails, I a bit about sea snails, like whelks, top shells, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Um, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Do you know what I mean? Because cause I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a lot of other places are, are shut. Yeah. Right? So, um, I know um, they like to eat stamps, apparently. They glue on stamps. They love it. Right? Right. Um, apparently, a lot of um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into letter boxes and eating right. the stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones. Mm. But that, that's a problem they're causing. All oh, right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. No. But you're glad you answered the phone today, right? They love beer. Beer, yeah. Who doesn't? And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years or can do. Right. I've, I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not. But I mean, sea snails are pretty important. Yeah, they're, they're, they do quite a good job in the sea. They uh, um, graze on algae in there. But, they but provide food for other other animals. I mean, you can say that about any fish, you know, or any animal. Why do they? Why do they exist? Would, would you be know. upset if you know someone said we're getting rid of them? Oh yeah, yeah. You would they're, be. They're an animal, you know. I wouldn't forget being like favoritism and all that. I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around. You can sort of spend your time looking after. You will still have a job. Don't be worrying about that. Because I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Yeah. 
Do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals, and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to... That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine. Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you're working in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. And you're slowing it down. Well, they asked my advice, and I'm giving it to them, so, you know, that's what I think, anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know. What do, what do they do apart from uh, some food for a, for a whelk? They were they were around uh, descendants around a lot longer uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time. But what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for thirteen years. So really, even though they've been around for ages, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think that sounds a bit. But I don't think they sleep for thirteen years. Not all, I mean, not all of them. Just just the just the tired ones. So. Snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got a, just as, you know, it's not for us to say, do we need them or not, we can't. So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Oh, I'm proud of you. That he was, was getting really quite annoying. I know. What, did he, what did he think he was doing? What? <laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You well, just don't tell the them. thing is, right, <laughs> I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because it doesn't matter. I just needed to speak to, to someone who knows. <laughs> I know the fact that you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be safe because he could look after Jenny Fish if he gave the okay to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I... getting livid, you could oh, tell. Oh, God. Brilliant. So you've yeah. been around a long time, but what have they done? <laughs> well, have done? that was great, Carl. Play records. Well, well done. Better for, better for any man. Oh, I'm obsessed with this song, Red Vines. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> Amy Man, Red Vines, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Um, you mentioned earlier when we had our um, regular email from uh, Dickie Anderson. Yeah. Randers, as I call him. Dandy son. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, you mentioned it because we didn't get anything from him last week. We didn't no. get uh, anything from him last week. Anyway, uh, he's obviously listening, um, <laughs> uh, Rich, because he's emailed in to explain uh, his absence. Dear Ricky, sorry for not tuning in last week, only I was in uh, HMV returning the 14 copies of The Office I got for Christmas. <laughs> that's, uh, that's from Randers. So, um, <laughs> he's explained himself. Oh, he's dear. excused himself. Oh, Anders, we should get him on one day. Yeah. Right, okay, Carl. That's ridiculous. Three amazing scientific facts, one of which is spurious. Okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, one. Um, girls can't throw because the part of their brain that allow men to throw properly in a girl is used up in emotion. Two, gravity isn't instantaneous, it works at the speed of light. The force of gravity. Three, statistically you're more likely to be trampled by a donkey than dying in a plane crash. No, even though the last one sounds daft, I think I, I've read that. About the donkey thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, girls, what's the, what's the first one? The, the Girl, girls can't throw properly because the part of the brain <coughs> that allow men to throw is used up in emotion in a woman. Yeah. Gravity isn't instantaneous, it, it works at the speed of light. So when you drop something, it, the force kicks in at the speed of light. What do you reckon, Steve? Well, it's well, not for me to say. Is this a trick one where none of them are ridiculous? Or no, one, one of them's one, one, of, one of those three. One of those three is not true. Right, well, it's definitely not the donkey, right? So, uh, I reckon the, uh, the girl one, throwing stuff. Is ridiculous. Yeah. Correct. Well done. Well Very done. well done indeed. Yeah. Very well done indeed. That's two out of two he's got so far. Well, there you yeah. go. Well, yeah. well, I'll teach you some stuff now, <laughs> right? I've also, I just I've always been fascinated by the, uh, the donkey fact, because it is an extraordinary fact that more people are killed apparently by donkeys. Yeah. Than they are by airplane crashes. Well, I suppose in countries where they're used and, yeah. you know, used a lot, that, you know, 
they, um, they go a bit mad and squash but, out. But my concern is that <coughs> there's, when you go on a plane, there's so many checks. I mean, it takes on 40 minutes to go through all the checks, the air pressure, the cam pressure, the fuel, yeah. checking the, you know, flights, the takeoff, all the rest of it. Our checks for donkeys. Nothing. Did someone close the gate? I think so. Exactly, that's yeah. It, that's our, that's is our he donkey annoyed? Check. Is he annoyed or not? <laughs> yeah. You're not working him too hard, are you? Yeah, yeah. He's got his hand. Is there two, is there two holes for the ears? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think that's what's happening. I don't think it's action. I think they're picking us off. I think they're yeah. so annoyed that a nickname for them is ass. Yeah. And they've got to wear the little hat, you know, they, they get, they've got to ride kids, you know, give kids rides on the beach and that. I think they're just sort of annoyed. Yeah. Maybe they're sort of just picking us off one by one. Yeah. Teaching us a lesson. Not, we, if we had the same stringent checks <laughs> exactly. on donkeys as we do on international flights, maybe yeah. they'd be a little less there. <laughs> exactly. Wise words. <laughs> Cheers. Wise, if slightly <laughs> coherent words. <laughs> Go so, on, Carl. Got that right. Um, so, um, <laughs> acid. I would sort you out with some science. Brilliant. I forgot the puns in mind, didn't I? I forgot the puns. Yeah. Go on. Right, so, um, yeah, you asked to sort of be taught some science and that last week after being taught about war. So, yeah. uh, did some research. <laughs> and, um, there's a few things. I think we'll just cover, cover one of them now. Go on. Um, we've talked a lot about airy kids. <laughs> We have I love the fact that Simon Sharma has never started a program <laughs> like that. Uh, the, the Jacobites. We've talked a lot about hairy kids. <laughs> Go on. It's, it's a little bit. I mean, it's not your traditional science stuff, but sure. it's still well, interesting, still. and it's a little bit. You yeah. know, it's still yeah, we talk about hairy kids. We have, we have disproportionately, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I think this show's talked about hairy kids more than any other radio yeah. show. Well, it's it's one that. Sorry, I noticed uh, both of you there dropped the H or the H or however it's called. I had to. So it, airy, airy kids, yeah. hairy, yeah. hairy children, not yeah. um, sort of airy, kind of light-headed or. Yeah. Well, there was there was the case of the uh, <laughs> the one who lived in China. Yeah. And uh, which was weird for two reasons, wasn't it? Yeah. So well, go on. Uh, one was like he was covered in air. That's all we do. Really, and the doctor sort of checked him over and said, "Well, yeah, he is airy, but he's quite healthy apart from he had a little bit of eczema <laughs> and a boil." <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that was the main bit of the story, wasn't it? Yeah. But this one, right, we have sort of talked about it, and, uh, you weren't having any of it at the time. What? This, this next bit of science I'm telling you about. Go on then. Right? Um, remember when I told you about a lad, he was living at home with his mum and dad, right, everything's, you know, normal life, go to school, that sort of thing. Yeah. Then, I think his mum and dad had an argument, and it kicked off a bit and he thought, I'm sick of this, it's happening all the time now, they kept having an argument, so the kid, Ran off into the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. God. Now he he left. He went and ran in the woods, and he ended up living with some monkeys. Right. Right. And he thought this isn't a bad life. You know, there's no arguments going on. Sure. He was getting on with them. Um, <laughs> and the weird <laughs> he loved thing bananas. is, this <laughs> this is where the science bit comes in. Oh, sure. He grew a load of hair on his body. That's not true. It's not true. It is true. It's an acquired characteristic. It's, it, 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 <laughs> I bet someone will back me up on this. But th no, no, you can't, you, you can't grow hair like that. You might get a little bit, uh, more downy, or they might, uh, the erectile tissue might, uh, you know, they won't fall out as much that we, you know, but you don't actually grow a big mane if well, you're cold and you're a human. Well, he did. He did. This lad did. I know it sounds a bit strange in that, but he, he was living with the monkeys, um, <laughs> and because it was cold, his body reacted listen, to Listen, listen. He was no hairier than he would have been if he was walking around naked on a cold day, with or without living with monkeys. The it, fact that he was living with monkeys makes no difference. No, I know, but I'm trying to get, you know, picture it in your head what it's like. Although Mickey Dolenz was always pretty hairy. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, he was living with them, and, um, he went into town or something one day. Oh, yeah. To get some food, <laughs> and the people there were like, hang on a minute, that isn't a monkey. Mm. Um, well, he went, he went in naked. <laughs> no, he was there covered in hair. Yeah. yeah, but naked, but covered in hair, so it was decent, it was, it was... Yeah, 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 but they, they, that was a weird thing, they thought it was a monkey in the shop. And <laughs> so he presumably he had a big long beard as well, because he couldn't shave, could he? No, no, he just covered, he looked like a monkey. And they were happy to serve the monkey, <laughs> were they? There's a the monkey, he's How buying did he walk? newspaper and some milk. How did he milk. walk, how did he walk, Carl? Did he walk like, upright or... Whistling along. The, just pi the picture that I saw on the internet, he was on all fours, but I don't know if that's when he was running he was. away after he did, did sort of, you know, realised he was a kid. But this was a picture. So he was a kid as well. He wasn't even like an adult with a beard. No, he was a kid. Brilliant, brilliant. And the, the beard went, kicked in a little bit. So early. listen. So the Go people on. caught him. You're an idiot. The people caught him. Yeah. Shaved him. Right. Got it all off. Didn't grow back again. Right. It just. It You're grew. an idiot. 
Well, like I say, people will have heard this story or read about it. You're and an idiot. And they'll email in. They don't let me down. And they'll agree that you're an and idiot. No, no, they'll they'll have seen the story. You're an idiot. So that's a little bit of science. <laughs> you're an idiot. Did you see the style of kids? Libertines, time for heroes and XFM 104.9. Right, okay, so have you got anything that is science as opposed to nonsense? Well, um... Kid went off with some monkeys, grew air, yeah. came back, shaved him, it didn't grow back. I mean, just think. Right, something else? Um, there's a few things I found. Yeah. Um, there's a fella... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, who had hiccups for 69 years. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. there's the dog with the wig that we've discussed. <laughs> uh, Imagine if you just tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's the dog with the wig that we've already discussed. Uh, did we discuss that? Not really. Did I not tell you what he said? I did, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what else have I got? Well, there's something here that you sort of know. Is this going out live? Yeah, no, this is happening. Right. right. Go on. But remember when you talked about, um, Sponges. Yeah. If you get a red sponge and a blue sponge. You liquidise them, pour them back into a tank, after a few hours that they, they know which was which and they, they reform as a red sponge and a, and a blue sponge. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was weird when you told me. Yeah. Looked it up, did a bit of research. Yeah. Thought that sort of sciency. Yeah. Um, you can do the same thing with a mouse's brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Explain a bit more. No, you can't. Uh, if, if you get a dead mouse. Yep. Um, put its brain into a blender, you know, blend it up, um, leave it standing for a bit. Making that up, aren't you? You get your confusing this, you watch Nigella Lawson make some sort of pudding. No. <laughs> what no. do you mean? What do you, wait, it, it, wait, it won't work with the brain. Well, it, it does with a, I mean, not, not human brain. Don't be trying although, that. But, although. No, a mouse, a mouse one. <laughs> a mouse one. And what happens? It sort of reforms. Goes back together again. No, it's, it's, you know, because apparently it's made up of the same stuff as. But it doesn't, does it? Because if it's dead, if it's a if it's a dead brain, the cells can't act anyway. The fact the sponge is that it doesn't kill the cells; it liquidizes them. It doesn't kill the cells, mm. so it couldn't be a dead brain anyway. It would have to be a live brain taken out from a live mouse for the cells to be getting oxygen and working and and being sensitive to each other. And that uh, I I don't see how that could work like it does in sponges. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, do you know what I mean? You're not a scientist. I, I've cool. just sort of read it and yeah. gone, oh, that's, that's interesting, I'll tell Ricky and Steve about it. Yeah, yeah. You're quizzing me as it. if I've come up with it. No. It's someone else has done it and said yeah. it works. Mm. Sure. So I'm not- do you, think, I'm not do you think ghosts are behind it or do you think there's a scientific explanation for it? No, it's just, uh, it's just one of them weird things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's what you sort of science covered yeah. for this yeah. one. Yeah. Well, that was another barnstorming feature. <laughs> 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 is that it? Is that the two things you got this week? for that. Well, yeah, yeah, that, I mean, there's... They're, they're there's the nothing that... behind them, do you know what I mean by this? There's not a, there's not like a weight of intellect behind these facts. Why don't it? you make that your science project for this week? Find a dead mouse somewhere, Carl, and a blender, <laughs> and we'll bring that in next week, we'll do it live on air, <laughs> see what happens. Oh. Well. Do you feel sort of let down a little bit sometimes with our reactions? Well, what I... are you expecting us to do? What, are you expecting us to just, like, look at you, open-mouthed, staring at you in awe? Just like, oh, God, yeah, where did you find that out? And, like, yeah, but we, we know, ask, we you know. Tell us. We know where you found it out. You looked on the internet and a strange homemade website by a maniac somewhere, uh, who puts on stupid things that he heard through Chinese whispers. It's, that's where you get your information from. I, I doubt that anything you've ever come up with is, is verified. If it is, it's luck. But what, what do you expect me to... Do you fear? Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just. <laughs> you know, I'd like to know what the source of the information is. I'd like it to be, you know, a research study by the University of Columbia, rather than, you know, a guy who calls himself Mr. Pickle. <laughs> <laughs> on a website somewhere, <laughs> www.lunatics.com. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh god, <laughs> some, things, some kind of evidence. Do you know what I mean? I'll go, I must warn you now. You know that Steven Spielberg thing's coming, Taken, yeah, about alien abduction. When you watch it, just remember this: it's not a documentary, okay? 
All right? And All right. You remember our E.T.? We were yeah. discussing that earlier. You know that's not fact. <laughs> fact or fact. Star Radiohead from the Benz on XFM 104.9. Rick John has emailed in. Yeah. It looks here like he's maybe trawled the web himself. I mean, I don't know if people just immediately leap onto the web every time Carl says something in, 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 in his defence. I think our listeners are always on the web. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, he seems like he's reprinted here a new story, which seems to confirm Carl's monkey boy story. Yeah, what is the new Doctor's story? Doctor's baffled by boy six covered in ape-like hair. Doctors in Kazakhstan are baffled after finding a six-year-old boy covered in ape-like hair. Yeah. The boy, called Able, was found in a remote mountain village close to the Chinese border. He's covered in thick hair from head to toe and has an oval-shaped skull. Doctors suspect nuclear radiation or a genetic disorder may be responsible. Fine. Um, but it's an interesting bit But, here. but sorry, it's not that you could have genetic defects. I've seen lots of people born with, um, long noses, five feet, etc. I'm saying you that he wasn't story. normal. <laughs> he, w he wasn't normal and then went to live with, um, monkeys and grew the hair. Well, that's, that's my true. point. But it says his mother and father are distant relatives. Such marriages are common in the Kazakhstan mountain hamlets. Now, uh, the village elders were consulted as to what to do with him, right? Now, these are the village elders. These are the, these are the wise men of the village. These are the people, presumably, that all year long are telling the, the village how to live, how to survive. Yeah, you're in charge because you've lived longest. You're, yeah, exactly. You're presumably are solving any kind of moral conundrums, yeah. any sort of awkward things. Do you know what they suggested that they do with their hairy son? Go on. Send him to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> the Carl's not in. Put him in the circus. <laughs> that was what they suggested, and uh, the mother actually wanted him to go to school. Um, Instead of the circus. I don't know, school or circus, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know what's better for him. Exactly. I'm not sure. <laughs> we must consult the elders. What do you think, Carl? Uh, it's not a bad life, is it? <laughs> what, the circus? Yeah. Well, you ran away from it. it. Yeah. Love it. But remember that thing that I saw about that fella who, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you talk about it really, so Go on. Tell us now. You hooked me. Come on. <sighs> you can say it. It's okay. What are you worried that it might be insulting to someone? Well, it's not. It's not nice, but it, well, you're you not taking the mickey out of it. You're telling us. Go on. It's just. It was in that book again that you got me. You know, the book full of weird people. Go and, on. And things that are wrong with them, and airy people, and yeah, lad with three legs and that. There's a fella. Mm. Um, basically just a head and, uh, <laughs> and a little body on a skateboard. <laughs> yeah. Right. Picture of him having a shave. <laughs> and he was shaving with his with his mouth bit, uh, with his tongue, <laughs> like that on the radio. Yeah, just like carving no <laughs> impression of a man shaving with his mouth. Yeah. Well, it's just a head. Bear in mind, he's doing an impression. Imagine a head <laughs> with a very tiny body on a skateboard shaving with its tongue. That's what Carl was doing. Oh, uh, and he was depressed because he kept getting hats for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 if you were in, you would just grow a beard, wouldn't you? Rather than. <laughs> Oh, Why? Well, rather than go through all but that hassle. you the wheels of your skateboard. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, so the answers to this week's Rockbusters. Yeah, yeah. Can you give us uh, the clues again in the answers? Yeah. Uh, the first one was, um... Don't argue with him, he ain't gonna change his mind. The initials there were AA. That's adamant. Adamant. Yeah. Alright? That's, good. That's, That's good. a good one. Uh, second one, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. Uh, that was P. Uh, that was Pixies. <laughs> Pixies. Pixies. Pixies, it kinda works, yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, third one, I'll have oh, to, uh, there you have that one. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to put that woman in an oven. That was AB, that was Anita Baker. <laughs> and need to baker. It's good. And need to baker. I yeah, I'll let you have all three today. So, uh, You've done well. So, do you want to pick a winner, Steve? Well done to Mark Ledder from Bo. He wins those fairly mediocre prizes. <laughs> 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 Enjoy them. Oh, brilliant. Oh, well, we've had a few laughs. A few we've had a few laughs, a few tears, a few scientific breakthroughs. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'll um, get a picture of Carl somewhere in the national press, just his little round head there. Has an email here. Carl is trying to distract attention from the fact that he is a monkey raised among humans and horses and has failed to develop hair. It's, uh, I can just imagine him yeah. being the second cleverest in a troop of monkeys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Second cleverest. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, it, 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 it flees out of there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his little face. I'll tell you what, Heek, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a picture of you, just put it in the radio section of Heek, just, this is what Carl looks like. 
Oh, another email. Someone said, um, when the monkey boy went to the shops, he was naked. Where did he keep his money? <laughs> Good point. It didn't happen then. Right. Well. <laughs> 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 oh. So that's that. We didn't even do all, all uh... What do you we mean? Get, we didn't get round to ritual. Oh, come on, give no, us a ritual. We, really we have, time. quickly, quickly. No, it's... We have got time, just do it! Why haven't we got time? It's ten two. Right, well, we've got a long track to finish on. Well, just do it. It's... Do are, it! Are you familiar with the place called, uh... <laughs> Go on. Easter Island? Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you know what they do out there? Uh, eat eggs. I right, don't know. Well, Go that's on. close. Go on. Right. What they do, right, there's, uh, there's a load of people living on an island. Yeah. Easter Island? And <laughs> to find out... Who's gonna be running the place? <laughs> <laughs> they um They don't hold elections, do they? They have these well they have these birds that lay like expensive eggs on a on an island. Expensive eggs. Yeah. They lay like expensive eggs. Fabergé eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. On this island. Yeah. Uh, Easter once Island? Yeah, once a year. No, off off it, like oh, about, yeah. about two miles out. Right? Oh yeah. And Whiston Island. And the sea, the sea. Yeah. Shrew Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, right 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 Just tell us! No, 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 you, Steve, we'll no, no tell us! If I finish Next it now, week. you don't you dare! Oh, oh, I'll see you later. Like, right. Johnny Mitchell. You. Blue Motel Room from the album oh, Nigeria. It's a song for the this week. Thanks for listening. Next week we'll be still on. The Flame and Lips. Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me is Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Good morning. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna own up straight away, I've done very little work towards this show this week. <laughs> <a bit> <laughs> you busy. surprised me. Yeah, yeah, so I apologise if it sounds a bit sort of- Thanks for being honest though, Well, Rick. no, I don't, you know, I don't want people to go, oh, that's a bit shoddy this week. I hope it's not gonna be that every week. Yeah. So, it is because I've done very little preparation. <laughs> okay. So, right. you know, you- Whereas normally- You'll probably have to help me out. All right. You have to do some of the some of the work, Carl. You might have to help us out a little bit as well. I don't know. But, I mean, I know Steve's done nothing towards it either, so the onus is on you a little bit here. I love the fact that it's still listed as either Ricky Gervais or Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Mm. In the, you know, Essentially, we don't need to be here, really. No, it, but I know now people listen for Carl. Mm. Uh, everyone I've spoken to, for you know, people on buses to uh, comedian like Ross Noble mentioned you the other day, and that you know. It, it, they go, uh... People on buses? I've never been on a bus you for years. You haven't been on a bus no. for like 12 years, yeah. have you? Yeah. <laughs> People on buses. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny, I just know well, the idea no, of you being on a bus. Well, the idea of you well, handing over your the bus, They're shouting out from the window. Right. They're going, I love Carl. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm walking along. How much is it on the bus? 20 pence. <laughs> no, come on, seriously, how much is it? Uh, um... W one, one adult for Terminus, please. <laughs> I love the fact, you know they do that thing where like if they're interviewing kind what of is it? Paul 50, Newman or someone pin? famous. No, it's uh, quid, isn't it? It's always, a quid. They always say how much is a, a pint of milk and that's supposed to prove if you're sort of still in touch with your roots or whether you're too big a celebrity. Yeah. You've got no idea how much it costs on the bus. Quid. Have you? It's not a quid. 120. No, it's not 120. Pint of milk, about 50p. <laughs> 30p. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! Wow. Well, because oh, I mean, it's fascinating because you gave this stuff. I mean, you gave this stuff up before you became a celebrity, didn't what? you? You were you were always lazy. Because people always say to me like, "Oh, um, you know, Ricky seems a bit obnoxious." Who know. says that? Well, no, they say you know. No, they, no. Who comes up to you and just says that? The guy on the tube did it. <laughs> I swear to God, he came up. He said, uh, he said I was watching an interview with Ricky. He said he's not a nice piece of work. I went, well, I mean, he said, no, I've got friends like that. You know, just, and it's like, they're always talking, they're a bit irritating, you know, and you sort of let them off because they're your mates. But I was going, well, hang on a minute, he went, well, nah, well, well two things, you know, it's sort of my job talking, and mm. being interviewed, essentially you do have to talk. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, about that's, yourself. If that's his only criticism, then yeah. I'm not too bad. No, he didn't think you were funny either. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> He had a, in fact, he had a whole list. <laughs> well, I say a list, a petition. It, it wasn't Dickie Anderson, was it? <laughs> it wasn't Rich Richard Anderson. I hope he's listening. He's our biggest fan. I'll tell you what, Mock Turtles need a remix by Fatboy Slim, don't they? Mock Turtles? It's yeah. a great tune, but I'd like to hear it remixed. Yeah. Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It? Remixed by Slim. Yeah. Yeah, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant, mm -hmm. Carl Pilkington. Ooh, <laughs> stuff, oh, stuff to dear, do. What's going on? Stuff to happening? talk about and that. What's been, was, going, uh, on? What's been going on? Oh, um, before you came in, oh, you saw it, didn't you? That experiment I was doing with the 
<laughs> an experiment. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, all I know is as I walked in the building, I passed the little kitchen area, you were hitting Carl on the head with a tin tray. Didn't it make a good noise? It was a great noise. Um, but i interested to explain more about the experiment. Well, I wanted, to, I wanted to see how hard I could hit him and make it resonate, right, before I either caved his skull in or, right. you know what I mean? So, you had to hold it quite loose okay. so it could, like, vibrate. But you had to grip it hard enough to give it a good whack. Right. And his head's brilliant for hitting stuff on. Like <laughs> is it? It is perfect. Can like, could we recreate that moment a bit later on the radio? You'll notice that you've been on for 15 minutes, I haven't said a word. Just had a bit of an effect on me. Right. <laughs> <It's> still, <laughs> still a little bit shaken. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, dear. But yeah, do it again later. We right. were talking about your head a little bit earlier, weren't we? It's not going to mean that you're sort of a bit, you know, fuzzy thinking, is it? Ah, uh, it'll be all right. Yeah. So, can we recreate that later? Maybe towards the end of the show, just hit you on the head with various objects, see which make the best sound. He said, he said, he said, talking about time out. I said, but something about in time out, and he went, ah, uh, yeah. Do you read that? I went, yeah, yeah. I read it. I get it every week. Yeah. He went, ah, uh, there's no point, though, is it? He said, because it's like a telephone directory. You know, if you want to look something up, you look it up, but you'd never sort of browse the telephone directory. And I went, that's an interesting point. He went, although I did. <laughs> when I was in Scotland, I just looked up how many Macs there were and there was 42 pages of them. <laughs> how bored are you in your hotel room in Scotland to suddenly start working out how many people start with Mac? Did you, were you sat in your room? You, there is nothing else that you can I think of I've been do. working. It's when we did the show from, you know, it's then did some stuff from Edinburgh. Yeah. You, you were know, sat in your hotel day, room. Sat in the room waiting to sort of go out and get some food and that. Sat there. Why were you waiting to go out and get some food? Because we're all going to meet up, we're going to meet up with, you know, with Simon. So you, you thought, right. I'm not going to switch the TV on, I'm not going to read a the magazine. The telly was on, nothing was on, I wasn't impressed with anything that was on, so I'm looking around the room, I had a couple of the free shortbreads. <laughs> <laughs> He remembers. Yeah. He remembers. He remembers a specific biscuit he yeah. had. Yeah. That's fantastic. I had a couple of them, and then um, looked around. There was a Bible, and I thought, well, I know about that. Yeah. There's nothing in that I don't know. So, got the phone book up, and immediately thought, there's a lot of Mac this and Mac that in Scotland. Yeah. Macintosh. Mac Daddies. Macateer. Yeah. This loads of names. So I thought, I wonder how popular it is. Um, <laughs> I wonder just how popular it is. 42 pages of Max. Did you count how many pages there were? Yeah. Did you, did you just work out from the numbers on the bottom of the page or did you literally no, I count counted, them? I counted. Right. And, uh, and how many do you reckon are on a page? There's a lot in there. It's if someone can tell you approximately how many it's names like, they get on one page. How long did it take you this whole procedure? What, was the counting? Yeah. Not, not that long. No, it's just counting two pages. Yeah. So yeah. It's not yeah. that much. They're all together, luckily. And what did you do, once you digested that information, what, what did you do with that information? Did I you tell people it, you I mean, look, how long ago was the Edinburgh Festival? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I stored it! <laughs> along with the biscuit! I love to get in his head. I was at a big warehouse, and there's lots of partitions for weird stuff, like bo kids born with tentacles, yeah, and yeah. things like that. I, th uh, I imagine there's like quite an old care caretaker, <laughs> and you go in there, you say, I'm looking for it, he goes, hang on, hang on, I know where they're, I put that somewhere. Hang, put on that somewhere. hang on, hang on, hang on. Is hang this on. the one when uh, they shave the cat? No, <laughs> it's not shaving the cat. This oh. is the Max. The Max. I oh, you know Scotland. The shortbread. <laughs> well, don't don't give me the shortbread because that's putting me off. But um, the, uh, the what's the name though? Do you remember last week I was talking about the airy kid? And, uh, <laughs> I think that's Carl. every week, Carl. That doesn't narrow it down. All right. Well, we were talking about that airy kid in the woods, and um, did a bit more research this week. Okay. Found a good story out about a monkey. Right. Which I'll, uh, tell Ricky a little bit about it. Tell me, come on, tell it now. No, right. no, 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 it's, it's well, easy with it. keep this. It sounds exciting stuff. Right. So that's got him, right? So we'll be doing that. <laughs> we've, we've got, that's got the audience. We've got, we've got Rock Busters again this week. Okay. Yeah. We've got, do we need them? Yeah. What, right. are you, what are you trying to get rid of this week? Cockroaches. Right, no, good I one. Can't, I can't think of a reason to keep them. No. Looking into that well. Oh, let's sort the matter out, that's okay. coming up. <laughs> we've got, um, I'm teaching you some more stuff. Oh yeah? Yeah. He phoned me up today, uh, yesterday it was, he knows he's been researching, like, educating Ricky. He said, uh, uh, what do you want to know about? I don't know, he said, uh, you're interested in space? And I went, yeah, yeah. He phoned me three hours later, he went, no, nothing about space. I went, what? He said, I couldn't find anything interesting. I said, you couldn't find anything interesting about space. Yeah. It's big. It's pretty interesting, Carl. He went, it's I went, big, but there's nothing there. That's, that's <laughs> It's like the Millennium Dome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, God. so what I'm looking at, right? But uh, no way. He said, "Is there anything else you want to know about?" I went, "All oh, right." Uh, I went anthropology. He went, "What's that?" I went, "Study a man." I sent a man. He went, "Like what?" I went, "Like 
I wrote from from caveman through and all the he went and I said Australopithecus uh, Neanderthal he went well you know all that then I went no it, he went right he went do you want to know how a lung works or something <laughs> how a lung works <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, tell me how a fridge works. He went, oh, I said, it's just the gas, isn't it? I went, brilliant. I went, tell me how a microwave works. He went, I know. I went, I said, fella walking past in a laboratory with a bar of chocolate in his pocket, went past some sort of ray thing, it melted it, and he went, hold on. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. Explain to me how a microwave works. <laughs> right. <laughs> so today, we're doing, uh, sort of medical-ish type things, under the banner of, um, colon then, educate me. <laughs> do it again. Colon on then, educate me. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's like, go on then. So yeah. colon. Brilliant. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's a little heading, you're gonna be learning three things sort of medical-ish, uh, yeah. uh, before three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that it? Yeah, do you wanna, uh, Pretty much, yeah. A bit of suede. Come on then. How many O'Reilly's are there, do you think? No, I don't know. It's a little <laughs> Swade, Animal Nitrate. That's really got a Johnny Marr influence at the end, that guitar, hasn't it? Brilliant. I mean, still, yeah. still brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington. Tell us about this monkey, Carl. You're gonna love this one, Steve, Go right? On. Uh, yeah, so last week we were talking about how, like, a lad left his family because there was problems at home and that. He went and lived in the wood, he got airy. Right. Yes, no, leave it there. Oh, we haven't got time to go into right, it. So that's what happened, and that's what happened. He lived with the monkeys. He went airy. That's, anyway, what, that's what happened. Looks into uh, some other stuff about like airy kids and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Came across this story about a bloke right who worked in a zoo. Oh dear. Right. So um, trouble's brewing. L loving his job and that, but it's, qu it's quite a lonely sort of job because you don't see many people. You're just dealing with animals all the time, right? Mm. So, anyway, well, he gets a bit pally with a monkey because it's the closest thing to, to a human. Well, that ape is. Right. Yeah, but you can't really go that close to apes. It's well, dangerous. Well, do, what do you mean, what type was it? Do you Just mean it let him tell the story. Was it a chimpanzee? I reckon it was a chimp, yeah. yeah oh, you don't chimp. even know, so it was a chimp. It was okay. a chimp, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does so it? So he it's gets pally story. with him. Right, so he gets pally with well, him. Well, have they gone all the way together? Well, no, I mean, he starts on off, pool, he starts off just checking each other out and, uh, you know, probably sharing lunch and that together. Yeah. Right? Anyway, this goes on for a while. Is uh you know, they, they're getting on well on that. And then after a while, right, the monkey starts sort of imitating him a bit more and sort of walking upright. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Right? So he thinks, oh, that's a bit weird. Anyway, they get on really better and what have you. So he thinks he could he could live at home with me, this. Yeah. Because we're getting on the storm. Yeah. Right? So he takes him home and before you know Is this the it, beginning of Beneath the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I think it is. I think you've seen this on video. Well, I, I'm worried, because he's already imitating him and they're moving in together. I'm thinking it's maybe a bit like single white female. <laughs> single white zookeeper. Oh, brilliant. Right, so Go anyway. On. So, he's moving in and it's getting used to sort of the, the normal human life. He's having a cup of tea in the morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Piggy tips. As well. <laughs> as a, uh, he finishes the day off with a. Oh with a, dear. Finishes, <laughs> finishes the day off with what? With it does, a, a it doesn't have brandy. to move a piano at one point, does <laughs> he? He finishes the day off with a little brandy. Yeah. <laughs> he pours himself up. Is he wearing a smoking jacket? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Carl. You're, you're listen, a maniac. Listen, mate. Now, this is, this is why it attracted me. It's amazing, right? <laughs> right. So, he's having his brandy and that, loving his life. Um, <laughs> next thing you know, he sort of, um, I don't know if he loses it or he gets shaved, but the top half of his body. He's hairless, hairless. Right? Apart from his head. Right? So right. he's got so it's the head. opposite of the kid. Well, well, yeah. This is what well, I'm that, that would happen. Right. Well, hang on, but so you don't know if he's shaved know. or if How did it say, uh, then the, the I'll hairless, what, what? I'll bring it in for you, the story, and then you right, can well, see okay, if I've gone wrong. Keep going, keep so going. anyway, so, well, um, so this is going on and it, 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 he's having a great life. Then the zookeeper starts getting a bit annoyed because He's having a better life than the zookeeper. The zookeeper's in the zoo. This is such <laughs> So the zookeeper's still got to do a day's work. The monkey's at home, he's partying. Well, he gets to a point when he friend. says there's no point you coming in to the zoo because the whole reason of you being there was because you're being kept there. Right. And he didn't want to bring the memories back, so he said, you stay at home. So you are just, you're talking such Just a let him finish. God, I don't know if I can sit here and listen to this drivel. Let me, oh, I'm fascinated. It's, it's, it's nearly over amazing. anyway, right? It sounds extraordinary. Can't so, <laughs> he, he's walking up right, he's having a tea in the morning, finishing the day off with brandy, um, <laughs> gets a bit out of hand, only tries it on with the zookeeper's wife. <laughs> <laughs> 
Make him go away. How does he do that? <laughs> well, because he's around humans a lot, he becomes a bit of a charmer. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, what, but what is it that he could do to seduce her? Pick fleas out of her? What? He didn't say. He's but, built. He was built. <laughs> yeah, he was well known. Uh, so what, what about that? Wait, what do you mean, what about it, Carl? It's obviously not true. It's obviously not true. This, this wasn't on the internet. This was in a book. So it's not a quick joke and just a. Uh, Put it on a website. This is in a book. I don't understand how. I love that he becomes a charmer. He's got better taste in brandy. <laughs> exactly. And he. Oh. That what is... was it that he was doing that seduced her? I don't know. I thought maybe because he was at home more than the zookeeper was. <laughs> but what would he be doing, <laughs> Carl? That... He's not going to be talking with her. They're not going to be playing like trivia pursuit. Maybe, maybe she liked the silent type. <laughs> I don't. I, he didn't go into that. He just said it, that's when the trouble started. Carl, play a record. All right, all right. <laughs> is that what Suzanne did when she brought you? Talking to the songbirds yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It's just the way I'm feeling. Feeder, just the way I'm feeling. XFM one hundred four point nine. I love that, Carl. You're you're. You're panicking. You've just remembered a song from your childhood, and I don't know what you're talking about. But, um, I'm gonna give out a number. Please take this number down if you can help, Carl. It's 08700 800 1234. Right, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that bothered. We were talking about a track from the 60s. Yeah. Uh, Mighty Quinn. Yeah. And it was on the same compilation. My dad had a tape in the car, and the tape was always on in the, in the stereo thing in the yeah. car. And I used to sit, sort of, sort of sit through all this stuff I didn't like. But knowing that coming up soon was a song about a, a monster with purple eyes. It wasn't Puff the Magic Dragon. It wasn't, it wasn't that. A monster, there must be something else about it that give people do, a Do you remember a chorus or a few lines? Um, it says something like, it was a one-eyed, it had big eyes, purple, and it eats people or something. The it big eyed purple eater, wasn't there a song called something like that? I, the I, big I, eyed purple And it was a hit, was, was it? I'm sure there was. A song which is something like the... Intergalactic Purple Eater or something like that. It's some like, it's a novelty song. Rubbish. <laughs> what, the, by the Bonzo Dundee? Yeah, it's that sort of thing, yeah. I'm what sure if you know what car- look, 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 the telephones have gone mad! Yeah, well, we'll find out in a bit. I mean, I'm not that bothered, I'm not gonna buy it. It's just that like we were talking about songs and that. It'll be good to know who it was, but- Yeah. yeah. Right, what? Rockbusters. Okay, now right. how long, where did well, you get to the phone? What, do you want to just answer well, that? Well, that's the phone, so just answer, answer the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Just see if someone's- Hello? Hello, mate. Uh, Alright. Yeah, uh, that song, I don't know if it's by, or is that what you want? Um, that's the bit I wanted, well, what, really. What's the name of the song? Well, you know that how it goes, it's not like, Bonnie, Donnie, 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, sorry, I don't think you've helped much, though. You, you can't, you can't remember what it's called or who it's by. Well, no, I mean, I know the tune. <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. But he's it done well. Yeah, he's done well. He's given up his spare time to call in and sing us a song. Don't diss him. Rick Lankinson, he's just only marginally remembering it more than Carl is. Yeah, it was actually in, um, I think it was in the Blob. No, it was in, in, in something like the Blob, actually. I think Steve McQueen was driving away and it was it, it, running in a secret. This is so very familiar. See if it, thanks very much, mate. See if we can get a title off someone. Oh, and, oh, XFM. Hello, uh, yeah, I know the name of that tune. Go on. Uh, it's the, what is it, the Purple Eyed People Eater. Yeah, that sounds about right. Who is it by? Yeah, well, I'll just, I'm just at work and, uh... Who is it by? It came to my mind. Do you know who it's by? I don't know who it's by, mate, sorry. This is not enough information. I wouldn't phone in we if I didn't ask them, information. But we asked them just what the tune was. But I want someone like Paul Gambaccini to call in. He knows what, you know, what chart well, okay, position it got okay, to. Okay, right. Well, I, well, I don't think this is enough well, information. Well, That's well, two people. The thing we is, got if you know the title, we can put it on the internet, can't we, and find out who did it. Yeah. That's full of Brilliant. information. Brilliant. Well, thank, thank you very much yeah, for calling I, I don't know why they bothered, frankly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, so, like, no, I mean, I just think if you're gonna bother to call in a radio station, you have the facts. You have so all the facts you have. Well, he hasn't got the facts and he runs the radio station. He doesn't run it, they keep him here like a mascot. He's like a pet, isn't he? They have him running around the office. God. Now right. listen, um, it's Rockbusters, I've got the, uh, the prizes here. Rick, I'll be honest with you, I mean, we've given away some, some shoddy stuff in the past. This but is the worst collection. Tight, is it? This is really scraping the bottom of the barrel, Carl. I mean, the, the, on the phone how many more mad. of these if can you, we give away? If, you, if you're still phoning, hang up, because we're, we're not gonna bother anymore. We, really sorry about that. Maybe email this or something. How uh, many of these can we give away? Look at that. It's only <laughs> Only Fools and Horses that, that, it's the videos. Christmas special from not this year, the year before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have given away so many of these. 
<laughs> I imagine there's charity shops <laughs> who outlet <laughs> throwing them away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got oh, that. that and I, you know, if you didn't watch it, you know, if you weren't one of the uh, 20 million that watched blue it. Blue eyed, fat legged, purple eater people with their hair. They had a big front, they had a big boom. It's something like that. Uh, and once again, the best chill out album ever with, uh, I mean, it's pretty much rubbish. <laughs> it was a big boo boo. Actually, no, the songs were okay, but it, either. it's just basically a collection of songs you might have heard on adverts. <laughs> so enjoy that. Oh god, this one again, the best air guitar album in the world, <laughs> volume two. This, this is no longer an entertainment show. I, this is three people chatting to each other now and again. Sometimes we remember it's going out. Sometimes we just take a call for our own amusement. I, I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the same price again. God. It's the David Attenborough um, uh, compilation of DVDs, <laughs> which I'd be very surprised if it actually makes it to you. I imagine someone here will have had that long before we post it. Oh dear! There's a T-shirt in here. XSM this is 104.9. You get sent a lot of uh, Just crap. In case you're wondering what you're listening to, you're uh, listening this is, uh, to this is a what is that? T-shirt. What is that? What's T-shirt? That's, that? T-shirt is That's that? a T-shirt made by the Quicksilver people. So if you're a bit of a surfer dude, and by the look of the size of it, you're a midget. <laughs> you can't say you're, midget. You're welcome to it. And this is, I think. The uh, piece de resistance, Rick. I mean, because you know the kind of fans we have. They're pretty cool cats, pretty yeah. groovy guys. Yeah, yeah. So I imagine they'll be loving on DVD <laughs> Doctor Who, the Aztecs. <laughs> That's one of William Hartnell, the first Doctor's uh, classic episodes oh, on DVD. God. There. Um, oh, you know, um, um, rubbish. That's rubbish, Carl. Those boys. Yeah, yeah. I'm ashamed to give them away. Carl, you know our mate Johnny. He's a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Do you remember? Um, he bought um uh, the Doctor Who magazine, um, and uh, he went. Um, to the toilet, and Steve got post notes and put geek on every page. And Johnny opened it on the tube, right, and it had geek and everything. And Johnny bought in the, the new Doctor Who magazine, I think this week's or this month's, right? And they've, they've, um, they've done the perfect Doctor Who fan, right, what the geek is, right, and it looks exactly like Steve. Alright, don't have a go, really. It does. And, you, and I, I've, it, I, I'm gonna try and put it on the website. It's amazing. It's got your hair, glasses, it stands like you, it's sort of dressed like you, and it's only, it's, it's hilarious. And he's, he's, he was, I mean, I'm insulting you now. It's, it sounds like an insult. But if you see it, you'd laugh. Play a well, Rockbusters, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Just a little um, bit annoyed. Just uh, three clues. We've <laughs> uh, <laughs> lost all the energy in this show. Haven't we? Well, I'm just. I can't get over that insult. I'm just a little. No, three. we did. No, it just came out. No, I can't believe it. Three clues. Left. Well, I wasn't expecting an insult. No, and, uh, I think there was a sense of camaraderie on this. No, I'll just email in Ricky Dodge of Ace X if I'm not going to UK. I'm just annoyed. I can't. I can't. What are we doing? I'm just. I'm just reading out the clues. Should we put this? Let's put this one in for the Sony Awards. Let's put this show in for the Sony Awards. Play a song, Carl, because I need to discuss things with him. I've talked before about him taking it down. Get this down to three minutes. It'd be a great show. Rockbusters in a minute. XFM. Lonesome Day by Bruce Springsteen from uh, his new album The Rising on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Former just phoned in and said uh, to Carl, uh, stick up for yourself. Don't listen to that merchant. He does my head in. He's so arrogant. I don't think I'm arrogant. I think I'm mean. <laughs> yeah. I just think I'm sort of objectionable. I don't think it's arrogance. I think no. it's sort of nastiness. Yeah. I'm just not a very nice person. <laughs> but believe me, I'm not arrogant. I think I'm pathetic. <laughs> and we've had a lot of emails um, saying, could you bring back White Van Carl? Oh, yeah. Which is that section of the show where we ask the questions that the sun asks someone else. Random punters. Yeah. Uh, of Carl. But sadly, recently they've got very politicised and very kind of uh, basically a little bit depressing. So uh, there's not really anything appropriate. But I have trawled the papers looking for other questions posed in other sections of the. Uh, the sun. Good idea. Um, I was just looking here at the Dear Deirdre section, which is the sort of problem page. Uh, I don't know what your views are, oh, are on this. I'd love to see Carl. Oh, God, can we get him a job? That's just negative. ask, oh my God, that would be amazing. Right? Well, here's one. I'd like to see uh, your view on this, Carl. I'm a happily married 42 year old woman with four kids, yet I've developed a huge crush on pop star Darius Dinesh. Yeah. It has sent my hormone levels through the roof. Yeah. And last night I woke my husband up at 4 a.m. for sex. We've been married for 20 years and he can't believe his luck. Recently I've been having. I wanna, sorry, I wanna go to a. I'll stop you there. Why are you telling me? <laughs> uh, d- <laughs> right, carry on. Sorry. 
Recently, I've been having erotic thoughts about Darius morning, sure. noon, and night. Yeah. I haven't felt like this since I was a teenager and mad about Donny Osmond. <laughs> My husband is amazed at the change in me. We had sex twice last night and again this morning. Again? Uh, why are you telling me this? <laughs> yeah, go on. He's just boasting. This is our problem. <laughs> it's yeah. our problem. What's here. the problem? No problem. Just wanted to tell someone. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. I watched Darius on TV last night, and when my husband came home, I dragged him into the kitchen, and we made mad, passionate love. Right, they've done it. They did it then, twice last night, once this morning. That's four times. Uh, five, the five times she's mentioned it so far. Yeah. Um, she's doing all right. Uh, my husband. <laughs> this is this is a great. Bit. My husband thinks it might be his new moustache. <laughs> Or that I'm going through the menopause. But you I were know thinking different. of growing a moustache, just thinking think of a change your look with the ladies. I love the idea, that's what he thinks it is. He's telling his mates in the pub. He's just going to me. Go the old Tom right? Selleck. Five times. In the last <laughs> 24 <laughs> exactly. hours. Hooray yeah. for sexy Darius. So, um, what do you make of that then? What's, uh, what are your views on that? Well, what, Hold on though. If that bloke is reading that paper, that <laughs> narrows it down it's a bit. It's gotta be, yeah. Uh, who else uh, d does he know? But his wife you... likes Darius, he's had sex five times that night, <laughs> and he grew a new moustache. <laughs> he's thinking, I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's me. <laughs> Maureen. Yeah, go on. But what's your concern, cause she, I'll tell you what her problem is, she's worried that, um, you know, the reason that she's now kind of overly excited and she's, you know, having this great sex with her husband is because she's actually fantasizing about someone completely different, younger. She's having these wayward thoughts, isn't she's a bit concerned about that. What's well, your concern? What, what, what are your thoughts? I reckon she's gonna start shoplifting soon and coming out and not flushes. <laughs> go on. Just, um, they're both happy, aren't they? He's getting what he wants. Uh -huh. and she's happy, I'd say, yeah, whatever, get on with it. Do you think that she could, she, she confess? Um, She wants to be honest with him. I, I wouldn't, cause not, not that many fellas like Darius. Right. So, <laughs> if, if you're sort of thinking, oh, she'd rather have him than me, I don't What do you think Darius work. would think of this? Uh. He'd, he'd probably be happy with that. I mean, if, what if you're sitting there- What would you do if you got, got loads of phone calls, right, from, yeah. um, women going, yeah. Carl, whenever you're on the radio, I just have to do it. I just have to do it. Your voice makes me- I say, right, well, you know, it's all right. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. <laughs> would you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, just in case anyone is doing that. <laughs> what would you do to sort of like egg him on a little bit to help him out? What do you think- What sexy what, things would you say? What do you think is your quality? What do you think people would find, you know, pretty horny about you? Is it your sort of mank wine, do you think? That, just, just say this, London shit, innit? I that, think I'd say that, but, you know, London, it's not that good, is it? Like oh, I think you've done it there. So. So, that's Say something of, quite sort of sexy though, say something like, you know, well, I love to love you. Say something sexy. No, say something sexy. His answers to me, yeah, you know, do you love me? I go, yeah, you're all right. And the thing is, I know that's true. Yeah, I know that's true. That's, so, that's brilliant. But because one of the things that Deirdre says is that she's she's wondering if uh, this marriage is going a little bit stale and needs to be freshened up. They need to give a new spice, a new spin to the marriage. What would you do? What would you advice would you give? To spice up, you know, something that they've been married for quite some time. Get him, get him, I think get Darius, all Darius things, get David Snedden's new video <laughs> on the telly. Uh, what do you reckon though, Carl? Just, mm. just treat him. Do you know what I mean? Just surprise him now and again with stuff. That's what, what I do. It's what you, you've got those condoms, didn't you? That you got two for so you, Hang on, what? You've never done that. What? You've surprised Suzanne with what? You know, I've like, uh. <laughs> he used to find a door and shout at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Don't of, drop the jelly! <laughs> Yeah, you know, just just the usual stuff. There was some free chocolate delivered to work the other day. I took her a bit of that home. Nice of you. That's really thoughtful. She didn't like dark chocolate, but I said, well, it's a thought. <laughs> so I had it. I had it. But um, you know, you often benefit from any <laughs> gift that you give yeah. her. The chocolate, uh, the meal, the condoms. You yeah. Always, there's always something in it for you. Yeah, there is. I love the idea. She's got bored with a Christmas present now, though. <laughs> what the condoms? Yeah. Or the food that she ate. Oh, the, the condoms. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, she's, she's got tired of filling them with water and throwing them <laughs> to the passing kids or putting them on her head and inflating them. I love the idea of asking problems. What do you think of, uh, erectile problems? You know that Pele advert, he goes, be careful, we haven't got erectile problems, call this number. What would you do if you're impotent? What would you do? What's the advertising? <laughs> Just saying, like, you know, if you can't, you know. I haven't seen that. Yeah, Why have yeah. they got him doing it? <laughs> well, well, he used to, you know, he used to be able to keep it up for hours, <laughs> the ball, and then. Uh, yeah. What would you do if you. To advertise that? No, if you suddenly couldn't get. You know. What would you I do? I don't think it'd bother me now. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're 30! <laughs> what's so wrong with you? were talking like you're an 80 year old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? You've you sort of been there, done that now. 
<laughs> it's like the boxing and the dancing that I did. It was good as a kid, and now it's like, yeah, take it or leave it. It's a roasted Deirdre. Supergrass, seeing the light, XFM 104.9. Um, we're a little bit worried. We might have a technical hitch here. We've had no emails, and usually we get loads and loads. Um, so we're worried it's us. Can someone send an email? Uh, well... Yeah, just a test email. Yeah, but we won't know if they have or not. They might just be ignoring us. No one might be listening, Steve, so this isn't proof. I, I guarantee there's at least one person who would send an email. Maybe if Dickie Anderson's listening, he could do it for us. Anders! Anders! Do us a favour for all the pleasure we've given you over the last few years. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Somebody you know. the Rockbusters, might as well give them out. Well, let's check the emails working before we do yeah, that. Yeah, otherwise it's a complete- yeah. this- this whole show has been a sham and a farce and a waste of time. Well, I think they can take that as great. <laughs> <laughs> right, educate me, Carl. Right, well, uh, Go on, mate. Say, right. Educate me. Well, what we uh, what we're looking at this week, we've we've done war, we've done. Um, we've nailed we done? that. We've nailed war. Did um. We yeah. summed up war with a little French bloke whose battle cry was "John's got a moustache." Right. So, and last week we did science. What would you do on science then? Off. Airy kid. Brilliant. Right. Yeah. So this week we're looking at uh, medical problems. I'm sure we do Airy kid every week. Mm. Um, medical problems. Then I've got I've got a couple of things under the banner of. Uh, Colon, then educate me. Yeah. Uh, we've got, um, this is interesting. Right? Do you oh. know if you have a, an operation on your brain? <laughs> right, what yeah. they do is, the, I mean, this is why I'd never go to the doctors. I don't like doctors because this sort of stuff freaks me out. Right? They can operate on your brain, and what they do is, they put you to sleep first, cut your brain case open. <laughs> <laughs> your skull, yeah. yeah. The brain case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then wake you up and operate on you. So you sat there with your head open, yeah. messing with your brain, and you well, don't no, feel anything. Well, there's no nerve endings, is there, in the brain? But still, it's not right, is it? <laughs> is it what, you think they do it for fun? No, but go, oh, go on, Reggie, wake him up so he'll freak out. Is, is, is it necessary that you're awake, do you think, or...? Well, they need the brain active, don't they? Yeah, but it is when you're asleep, you're having mad dreams. I had a mad dream the other day. Go on. No, I might tell you about it later, but there's no sense to it. But, so your brain's still, your brain's still- <laughs> Where is this conversation? Yeah, I mean, it'll turn out, I'll go, no, Carl, I was there, that wasn't a dream. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but- <laughs> So, I mean, I, if I had an operation- On your brain, heaven forbid. Well, <laughs> operation anywhere, I'd like to sort of think, well, I'll have an injection, I'll go asleep, but when I wake up, it'll all be sorted. Yeah, yeah. The fact that- your brain case is open. Open, and they wake you up and you think, oh, is it all done? They say, well, have a look in the mirror. And you, and you yeah, brain- See, I don't think they do that. I don't think they try and frighten you when you're doing an uh, operation. Yeah, I don't think that like, you go about your business and they sort of follow you around, dabbling. Yeah. No, but it's almost like they are having a bit of a laugh with you. Right, well, I'd just like to say now that they don't. Anyone who's going in for an operation on their head, uh, do not ever listen to anything Carl says. Wh wh why have you got to be awake? Because you'll be bored anyway, you'll be sat there. Well, they, they give you a out. telephone directory look and they say, look how many Macs are in there. We've, that's the Scottish telephone directory. And, you know, time flies when you're counting <laughs> that sort of thing. No, but do you know, like, when you- What are you- what are you telling me? What are I'm you asking me? I'm just saying how weird it is. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, do you know when you go for a haircut, <laughs> right? It's a bit embarrassing. Well, I don't anymore, but when you go for a haircut, it used to be- a When bit you go for a haircut. It used to be a bit embarrassing when, like, they'd wet your hair and they'd make you have that sort of- Hitler cut because your hair's wet and I used to hate it and I think do you have to do that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know it's what I similar, mean? It's you? very similar to uh, open um, skull no, surgery. What I'm saying yeah. is it's almost like barbers like to do that to make you look daft and feel daft for a bit and there's women coming in and out and you're sat there with a daft haircut. Yeah. And this is what that reminds me of. Do you think that? Do you think they do it in a shop window? This brain operation? I'm just saying it's a bit <laughs> do weird. You think, why are we doing it in John Lewis's? Just so more people I love the idea that that's what doctors are doing. <laughs> Let's make this guy look a bit stupid. Yeah. Open his brain Look case. at the twatty look with his brain <laughs> out of his head. Take a Polaroid. Reg, take yeah, a Polaroid. Take a Polaroid. Look at him. Look, 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 look at his face. Right, look, like, clock his face when I give him the mirror. Get this on camera. Put Carl this fake nose and glasses Sorry, on. Sorry, is that- did you teach me something then? Was that I thought you like your brain- your brain case can be open with your awake. And you just sat there sort of letting them get on with it. Brilliant, I've learned that. I'll never forget that. Right, go on, anything else? 
You'll love. Let's play a song because the next one is amazing. <laughs> what, even more amazing than that? Yeah. Play a song? Yeah, a bit of Bowie? No email still, by the way. No, I don't think it's working. It's not working today. Lady still Stardust. Working. We'll have to do a phone in for Rockbusters. Off Love the it. Ziggy Stardust album. Alright. Mm. Bit of David Bowie. Uh, when's that ever hurt anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon, then. Educate me. Right, so, um... I've learnt that you can, you know, fiddle around with your brain when awake. That's brilliant. I've never been a fan of Doctors, though, so this was a good one for me to, yeah. to look up, because... Yeah. Did I tell you the time... When, uh, the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die. Alright, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, must have been about fifteen, right? And, uh, at lunchtime there was this, we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have, um, like a, like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or, there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and, uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So, um, she used to, like, bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because, you know, they'd, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate, and eat a load. Brilliant. Yeah. Scabbing, yeah. eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really, it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays, but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean it used to be chocker. Uh, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, <laughs> have a cake. <laughs> headmaster probably <laughs> yeah. fighting the kids off. <laughs> right, so I'd have, uh, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon really, right? So, you'd do that. And this one day I must have had six or seven, uh, jam donuts, a few congress tarts. Uh, <laughs> What's a congress tart? Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. <laughs> uh, and uh, if anyone maybe... can get a congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd, once yeah. or twice a week you'd have a load of cake. In your life, yeah. Yeah, so anyway. in your life. Uh, were, were the frog boys there with the, with the, <laughs> Webbed hands and the big heads, so, and the horse in the settee. Uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Okay. Right? I was like in agony, could yeah. hardly walk. So I said to my mum, "Ha, oh. <laughs> could hardly stagger to the free cakes." <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was in absolute agony. I said, "I think I don't like doctors, but you will have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is. I can't walk." She gets the doctor around. Uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, "He said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left." Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My mum was panicking. Sure. He went, my dad came in from work, she said, oh, something's really bad with Carl, I think it's serious, it's, you know, the doctor said he ain't got long left. So he said, what, he said that and just left? So she said, yeah. So I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is... Um, <laughs> I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she didn't yeah, just eat her. No, 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 can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a show off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yes. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? I had about six cream grants. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> That's what I think the doctor did. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, yeah. well, I'm not going to prove him. He's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in. Hi, honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's going to die and then left. <laughs> did he? I'll call him. But anyway, that's why uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go it's on. a short story. So, right, uh, old woman, about 70 years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff, nothing wrong with her, she's having a good life. And, uh, one day she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out, cause she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, 
She says, take your clothes off and that. So she does. And, uh, checks her out. Says, yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, oh God. He says, you got a, a tumour on your buttock. Right? So she goes, oh. What can you do anything to sort it out? So they go, yeah, 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 we get book you in for an operation, it's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward I, I, you. I'm, I'm not, honest. Right, I'm, no, I'm, listen. I'm, okay, no, no, let, serious. Let me, okay, Carl. I'm telling you now. I'm leaving. I'm no. never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly, you're talking. I, I, I've never had such. But you are play a record. Play a record. <laughs> I can't believe it. it. What do you mean you can't believe it? Stop, stop the record. Stop the record. Stop the record. Right. Okay. Right. What do you mean you couldn't believe it? No. When I read it, I said I've got to uh, tell this Richard. This woman out. had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years. You mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. Syntax, Pray, XFM 104.9, Richard Ray, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilton, right, get off. Right, what you got next? Right, well, uh, running a bit late with this, but it's time for, uh, do we need them? We're, we're looking into what I'm really is. worried about this, cos everyone's getting that last clue wrong. I reckon it's so rubbish that even your mental fans can't work out. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one, but... Give that final rock busters clue again. The Jamaican fella, uh, had to have some aspirin. Why is that? Why, why did he have to do it? No, FD. hold on, that's changed. <laughs> well, do you, I mean, it doesn't matter. The oh, it doesn't matter. There. That's the point of a cryptic clue, isn't it? Oh, do, do. What have you got now? Right, so we, we're looking into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails, I've spoken to someone about jellyfish and that, and, uh, looking at cockroaches today. Right, now who's the expert? Um, it's a woman called, uh, Jessica Marshall. Right. Does she know that you're going to play this on the radio? Well, I called up, right, in the week and said, can I talk to someone about Just cockroaches? And she was like, is that Carl? She knows who you are. Yeah. Right, so she already knows maybe your angle, your approach. Yeah. She and uh, she, she is an expert, she's just not, not just some random person. No, she works in a museum, where, a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's the one near Knightsbridge, it's got dinosaurs and that in it, it's worth seeing. And the National History Museum? Yeah. So, uh... It's <laughs> <laughs> not sure. It's <laughs> <laughs> not sure. <laughs> this is okay. what happened. Now, what I'll do, I'll tell you as much as, as I know, and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong, and then at the end of it we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. All right, so, uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, I, that I found out is that, um, that they have 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects, so they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia. That's sort of classic human knee and every other animal knee. So with six legs, you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double jointed? Uh, I think you're grasping at straws or something. All right. Well, uh, well, we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for forty minutes. Well, they don't do that because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body, so, um, no, it, they're not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do, and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got the mouth shut, they might be able the to slide. Mouth has nothing to do with breathing. So you just feeding. So you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something, and it was. got bored after forty Again, minutes and said, "Well, we'll call it." Right. Unkind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all. You can't do that. Yeah, but. No. Pretty unkind thing to do anything to anything, even a cockroach. Something else I found out. Yeah. They can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't bleed to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had 18 knees, you seemed a bit sort of 
like, don't, don't talk ridiculous, but yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Ah. Uh. So, so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah? Yeah. Why, when it was invented, has it got that facility? Say if someone said to humans, we could do that with humans, and, you know, if you lose your head in some accident, it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your, to your family and maybe write them, write them a note, you won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying, it was my own fault, and uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well, that would be a useful facility, I agree, but cockroaches are great survivors. I mean, they've been around for over 300 million years. They're one of the most primitive insects. All right. Well, I've also, um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently they can sort of rest for 75% of the time. Rest? Yeah, they just, just sit about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. What I mean, that? maybe maybe the 25% uh, that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make probably up. probably searching out food and, um, yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge and they'll become very, very quiet and you might think they're dead. Yeah, but I'm sure, you know, if, if we were sat in a fridge, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we, you know? Well, uh, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... Not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So, cockroaches, can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them then? I would say so, yeah. I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally, really. Because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, I think you should be more concerned about your sources, which I've been trying to tell you for a year, right? The fact, I mean, I mean 18 knees, where did you get that from? It was, uh, it was on the internet. Uh, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what you read and take on. Mad world, don't it? <laughs> right, the cure, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Right, Carl's been taking phone calls for these clues. <laughs> right, and so everyone's been saying the same thing for the last one. He's been going, no, no, and I'm worried. I'm always worried. FD, I just overheard him on the call. They're going. <gasps> What have I been saying? Oh, no, it's FP. <laughs> Dickhead. Right, give me the clues out. It's a roller. Right, tell people. That's, we're really sorry to anyone who would have got that right. Okay, right, do the clues quickly. Tell them it'll be a rollover, so we have to do three new ones. Do you not write these You're down, such a I, don't, I don't write the answers down in case Ricky looks over the thing and sees the answer. Why would I cheat? I'd rather you do something right with your life. Right, well, the clues were, I've got three other jumpers like this one. Yeah. That was FT. Yeah. They got that, four tops. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Good, well done. That bunch of people can't make up their minds if they'd want to sit in the sun or not. That was C, they were getting that. That was charlatans. Charlatan. Right, a bunch of them, charlatans, right? What, what, what do you mean? What's char- <laughs> What's Charlie? No. No, sha- it's like, shall I go out? Shall we? Charla. Charlatans. They got it, right? <laughs> Where I went wrong with this one, uh, the Jamaican fella, he had to have some aspirin, why? Um, it's my fault, you know, I'm not, I'm not, there's no point passing the book or anything. Um, I said FD, a lot of people were saying, uh, Fred Durst, like, f four Ed Ertz, which is a good <laughs> one. Yeah, which would have been as good as any of yours. But I made an error, so we'll roll it over. No, 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 no. What is the answer? We'll roll, we'll roll, what what is the answer? Over. Jamaican fella what? Add some aspirin, why do that? What's the, what's the thing? FP. FP, it was free da pain. <laughs> free da pain? Free da pain. Free da pain. Free da pain. <laughs> That's awful. Can't free da You've got to write these down next yeah, time. This is well, I'm, right. I'm sorry, you are, right. Uh, you're I, the producer. I, think, I know, I know, but I've had a busy week, haven't I? That's it's doing not stuff an excuse. <laughs> that isn't an excuse. Our excuse is we don't, we have, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you do put care. the work in and you, then make a mistake. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's better not to try. 
than try your hardest and be rubbish. <laughs> Do you see what the point? We've got, we don't care. But you've got standards. Yeah. And, and you're, you're not meeting them. You're for, think of that. You're not even reaching your standards. <laughs> God. Right, uh, well that's that I guess. Well, the prizes will be uh, giving those away next Bollocks week. Bollocks again. Uh, Just and, completely... Uh, Song for the ladies to end the show with. It's from Nick Cage's new album, Nocturama. This is a track called He Wants You. Back next week. Remember, free to pain. <laughs> There you go, feeder, just the way I'm feeling, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've got a great show lined up this week, haven't we? Go on, what have you got planned? Uh, well, I've got songs from David Bowie, Thin Lizzy, Gene, AC, DC, you heard feeder there, you got, oh, oh, of Smiths, mm. all mm. that. We've mm. got a great feature, a new feature, um, we spoke to Carl in the week, and we worked out a new feature where, um, people are gonna give him sort of like problems to solve. There could be scenarios, there could be management scenarios at work, you know, problem solving, things like that, organising things. He's a very good organiser. So I'll tell you what, tell you what happened. He's dropping do we need him because he's getting fed up with scientists. He thinks there's a conspiracy and they're getting together and they're never gonna lose an animal. <laughs> right. So he's just fed up with that. Uh, Rockbusters, we've got some great prizes. Uh. Well, have you seen them yet? No. Nah. Be careful. They're not gonna be great, I just peeked in and all I'm gonna say to you is, Fools and Horses Christmas special? <laughs> not the little one with the little car. With the little one. car, yeah. Brilliant. That is excellent. Carl, what have you got to say for yourself? Hold on, it was a rollover, wasn't it? Cause you really mucked up yeah. Rockbusters last time. What was he doing? It's saying FP for the whole thing. No, FD you were saying and it was free to pain. Have you written the clues down this week? Cause that seems like an obvious I'll way to improve I'll, it. Yeah, I'll write the clues A week down. before he couldn't remember what the answer was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. You know, you learn by your mistakes and that. Mm. You don't. <laughs> well. So, so yeah. I'll give you a little taster, but we were yeah. having a, a pizza in a, in a pizza establishment. Uh, when was it? Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah. And, uh, he was going, I'm a good uh, organiser, I'm a good problem solver. Give me any, any scenario, right? Obviously he didn't say scenario. Um, and I went, okay then, so uh, you're the manager of this place, and there's a couple there, elderly couple, they're about 60. They've had a lovely meal. He went, yeah, right. I went, but the, the gentleman, he's got a little bit of a heart condition, he takes a pill after his meal, as he should, after meals. <gasps> he's only taken Viagra. Oh. And now he's stuck in. Wedged in? Wedged in. We've it's gone. It's gone, and it's stopping him getting out from the table. Yeah. So what would you do? He went, what? He's stuck in because of his dick. I went, yeah. He went, right. He said, I'd use the situation, I'd make cash. I said, you're not going anywhere, do you want a pudding? <laughs> <laughs> Entrepreneurial, <laughs> yeah. I like it, Carl. Anyway, oh. so that's that sorted. I've got the job on that. Next, I went, okay. Now that, oh, you won't believe it, next day, there's a little problem in the toilets, two, two gay men were having sex and they got stuck in, in each, each other. other. Yeah, yeah. He went, right, I'd say, is it the same fella ye as yesterday with Viagra? If so, why was he let in again? He was on the door. <laughs> yeah. I went, it's nice, dude. Yeah. He goes, right. Does his wife know he's cheating on <laughs> Yeah. He went, right, I'd go down, I w I'd go, and then he went, Oh, I'd say this isn't a restaurant problem, call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Strictly speaking, not a restaurant problem, no. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Huh? Am I right? Well, I don't know. Would you give me the job if, if say, like you were the boss of that restaurant and you? Uh, do you know what I like about this? At no point did he say, "Jamais, why are you being so mental?" Yeah. yeah. Why would someone get stuck because they took Viagra by mistake and two people get stuck in each but other? But you've heard the stories from his past. <laughs> that is a perfectly legitimate situation <laughs> yeah, to find yourself yeah. in. If you grew yeah. up in his part of What Manchester. would you do if there was two fellas with big heads and webbed feet and they had a horse in a? Well, what I do is, what would you do? What did you do when you <laughs> when you first saw him? What, so the, uh, the, the lads with the big heads and Yeah, that? yeah. Um, I We should very quickly remind people if they didn't listen to that particular show. Um, they were, they had webbed hands. Yeah. Did they have webbed feet? Well, they had, they had webbed hands. Right. And big and heads. And enormous heads. But it wasn't related. But they weren't related I know, to they were completely no, 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 but people. I'm saying that the webbed hands isn't due to the fact they've got a big head. No, sure. It's two different things. We're just unlucky. Yeah. No, hold on. If they weren't related th and they both had webbed hands and big heads, I'm saying there was a condition that had, that yeah. was related that had those two can- I don't think it was. So what do you think the chances of that are? They're not related and he goes, oh, you've got a big head and webbed hands as well. Yeah, just a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. I, d I honestly don't think it was related. Right. Because I've I've seen I've I've since seen the the same problem again on another kid with a big head. Zans look good. 
Right, so the, do you think the big head is just a separate issue? Yeah, it's a totally different illness. It's right. like having a headache and a cold at the same time. Right, so not always connected. But the weird thing is, right, <laughs> and looking, looking around in the week at weird stuff on the, uh, on the internet, yeah. there's this woman who's got a big head. Oh, yeah. And, um, she was fed up with it because when she was walking down the street, <laughs> it was so big, she couldn't hold it up. Right. Right? <laughs> she couldn't hold it up. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, keep, shut up. So she when, she, hold up. when she was walking, <laughs> she, her eyes were hurting because she had to sort of look up all the time because her head was that heavy. Her chin was sort of balanced on her chest. Right, right? and she'd have to peek up, yeah. So uh, she goes to the doctors, and this was after years and years. And uh, <laughs> said, you know, I thought I could put up with it, but I can't. It's it's a bit short. Short. How big was her head? It's big. It, I don't know if it was like big because there wasn't a picture. I don't know if it was just big or a lot of bone. So it was heavy. <laughs> heavy. Right, like the elephant man, just so, outcrops. Yeah, right. So, yeah. uh, so the doctor said, yeah, um, we can sort that out. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll have to take your head off. Right. Okay, no, okay well, so listen, keep listen going. Listen, okay, keep going. Because yeah. I, again, I, what you don't seem to understand is I, I have the same reaction to you when I see it. Yeah. What? Right? You're quizzical yourself. So, looks of it, they took her head off, um, chipped away a bit of the bone, mm -hmm. made her head lighter, put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> right, play the Smith. They Bizarre. took a woman's head off. Yeah. Bizarre. Ask by the Smiths on XFM 104.9. So, uh... What's the email, Carl? If people want to ask you something, a problem, they've got a problem to solve. It can be anything. It can be a personal problem, it could be a scenario, it could be about, uh, it could be about war. It can be anything. But it or it could be more flippant, I suppose, and like Yeah, yeah it could be. Yeah, but I prefer stuff that I could sort. So you can get your teeth into. And, and, and actually, you know, sort out. What, war, like war? War is too, it's a bit, bit big for me, that one. Do you think? I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? If Tony Blair came to you and he went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've tried spin. I've tried being tough. I've tried backing down. I've tried getting other countries involved. They don't want to know. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, you don't know. Tricky one. I don't it is get, a tricky, I don't it is a tricky one. Yeah. I don't worry about it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in the bath. Put a mattress on the on top of you. That's it. Sorry, wh why are you doing Ooh, that? Ooh, slow down. Why are you doing that? That's what they say you do, isn't it? If it kicks off. If what uh, kicks off? If, if, there's, if there's a war and that, you, you get in the bath, put a mattress on top. Right. Did yeah. they do that in the Second World War for six years? Was that make, making bunk beds? That's just what I read somewhere. Yeah. Get, is the bath full of water? Uh, no. No, no, no. 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 Might be daft. Okay. Yeah, I think that Christmas. I think they were enamel baths then, though. I think they'd stop a bit of shrapnel. I think the plastic ones you get nowadays would probably melt on you. And the mattress where your dad has cut it in half, all the foam would come out and the springs would get you in the eye. Oh, talking about me dad. Steve, you'll love this, right? Go on. Um, my dad hates, uh, he hates being ripped off, right? Yes. Well, now I can relate to that, that's important. Um, hates coming to London now, he always wants me to go and see them rather than come here because he just thinks London is like a big rip off. Mm. Uh, last time he came he got annoyed because I bought him a scone and a cup of tea for like three of us and it was fourteen pounds and he just yeah. was livid. <laughs> and then uh, we had an argument about that and then we went to the Millennium Wheel and I said, do you fancy going on this? He said, oh, all right. And then he saw the price and it was something like twenty quid or something. And he said, twenty quid to go up in the air to look at stuff that's on the ground. So I might as well stay on the ground. Brilliant. Right? Thought, good point. His logic is impeccable. So anyway, this is going on. Anyway, you spoke to me the other day, I said, how are things? Are they alright and that? He said, oh, being ripped off. I said, why? He said he ordered, do you know the place where he got a new bed from because he cut the other one out? Of course, off, yeah. Right? He, uh, he got this bed out of a catalogue. So, uh, so he sorted out a payment on the phone. He said, look, you're ripping me off a bit here on the interest thing, but, um, well, let's do a deal. We'll sort out a new monthly payment. That's different to the, what it says in the catalogue. And he said, yeah, we'll go along with that. Anyway, so he sorted that out, he was happy, the bed arrived, it's a nice bed, he said, that's great. So anyway, uh, he got the bill for it, and it was the original price. Oh, I thought it might be the case, yeah. Right. So he called up and said, I'm not happy with this. He said, we, we said a deal, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, right, don't send me your catalogues anymore. He said, I'm not, I'm not buying anything from you, you're a rip-off merchant. Uh -huh. Right. Um, so anyway, a few, few weeks go by. 
post comes, only another catalogue oh, in the post. he's livid. Right, so he was well annoyed. Yeah. So he looked on the back and it said on it, this catalogue will always be property of, you know, the company that, that does it. Um, if w so you can't throw it away. If, if we request to have it back, we've got the permission to, to get it back off you. Right. right? So he thought, right, well, they're out of order. I told them not to send me one, and they have done, and they're saying I can't chuck it away. So he called them up and said, uh, all right, Mr. Pilkington here, bought a bed off you, you conned me, and that. <laughs> but, you know, forget that. We've, yeah. we've dealt with that. You've sent me a catalogue, I told you not to. It says on the back here that this will always be yours, yeah? So, in a way, you're using my house as a warehouse. I'll be charging you 26 pence or something uh, a day. Brilliant. He said, you already owe me £6.28. <laughs> something like that. Genius. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorted it out. So again, you know, it's- it So hang on, but are they going along with this? I don't know what happened. He said they sounded annoyed and said they'd get back to him and they haven't, but he said, I'm not bothered. They can take as long as they want because the money just keeps going up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, what sort of profit has he made so far? Well, when I spoke to him in the week, it was like six pound odd. Yeah. That was, I think that was on Tuesday. So, so he's, 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 you know, he's just leaving it. It's like an investment. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like an antique. He's it's just, yeah, yeah. It's just going up every day, so, uh. Well, keep us posted on that. That's yeah, dynamite. I, I, one day we need to speak to your father. Yeah, I think so. So many questions I need think to we be do. asked of him. But I might sit and give you a letter to take home. <laughs> yeah. Dear Mr. Pilkington. <laughs> your son, Carl. <laughs> New single from, uh, Nick Cave. I think I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. That's the uh, forthcoming single from Nick Cave from his album Nocturama. That's called Bring It On. That's great. I, I must admit, I was a latecomer to Nick Cave. He's I was, extraordinary, uh, yeah. I, I mean, years into his solo stuff before, you know, I decided that he was brilliant. Mm, yeah, he's fantastic. No, he's, he's fantastic. Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. You'll be pleased yeah. to find out. Um, I, I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly. Because I know you think you like things to be quite, the, quite sa you know, samey. You like the status quo to be maintained. You like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords. You know, because you, I remember, what did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came in on the yeah, first well, day of exercise? I don't know why you're making a big deal. Do you want to I'm just being honest, honest, honest though. I'm just well, being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, well, he's a bit weird. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I love ooh. that, Steve, that you brought it up. And then you're, again. But I'm you're, sure that wasn't what he said before. No, did he, he didn't. Say before I, yeah, he, well, well, he's I, a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and, uh, I knew. I could see by the look at his face. You know when, uh, when you know you, your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, why does your kid? And goes, oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders. Right. It was like that. When I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, what do you think of that, Carl? I could see the look on his face that he, d he was disturbed. Sure. And then, as he said, you get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And, y and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now, and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might have just got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Don't bring it up, Steve. Don't well, look at me like that. So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think, I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there then. But not just in the office. As you walk through <laughs> the building. It's worse than you ever thought. Well, no, it's not worse than I ever thought because, as you well know, Ricky Plays. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did I do on uh, Thursday morning? Oh, is this the thing? Uh, for those uh, that perhaps are, are not of the female persuasion listening, there's a magazine. Apparently, it sells quite well. It's one of the sort of female, you know, kind of uh, issues magazines. I think it's called Company Magazine. You know, it's like your sort of. I guess it's a bit like your Moore or your Vanity Fair or yeah. whatever. Anyway, they run every year. The 50 most eligible bachelors in Great Britain section. Ding dong, hello. Who's in there this year? In the f in the 50, in the top 50 of the entire country. And then they vote, they vote, and they put them in order and see who's the most eligible bachelor. But that's of, that's 50 people, right? Most. I mean, the I. It always annoys me slightly because bachelor, it 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 kind of seems like a more sophisticated word for loser. Yeah, it? No. which always sort of unnerves And also, they try and do a different 50 every year, so they're but getting pretty desperate to get different ones. No, you know, no, no, not no, many, no, no, no. Because no. also, a lot of people who are sort of like successful, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, are married, so there's very little to no, no, go no, on, no, no, there's a huge, no, there's a huge, I don't know if this is international, it could even be international, I'm sure. not sure, actually, so sure. I could be up there with the likes of Justin Timberlake, sure. etc. So, uh, Fred Durst. Yeah. That sort of person, you know. So anyway, l l this is what's exciting, right? Although I'm slightly frustrated because they were telling me that last year, all right, uh, they get, because what happens is the, all, the readers of the magazine, they vote for who they think is number one most eligible bachelor, right? Last year, the, uh, the prize was a two-week trip in the Bahamas, okay? This year, 
I'm rather annoyed because all I'm going to win is a moped. That's whoa, whoa, the prize this year. Whoa, whoa, That's the prize this year. Whoa, a moped. Whoa, 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 whoa. Backtrack. What? Sorry. Last year was a two-week trip to Bahamas, and this year it's what? Just a moped. I'm all, all I'm going to get is all a moped. All you're going to win is a moped. Yeah, I'm you're so. Not, you've got no chance. You you've got enough. no chance. Who enough. else is in it? Who else is in it? Well, I mean, I don't know lots and lots of people you'd never heard of. There was, I know, Duncan from Blue. Ding. And so, no. it, so you're second to him at least no. already. I imagine you're you're gonna come behind the other forty nine. No, 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 so, uh, no, 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 because you know, there'll be people voting for me. They yeah, get to vote for me. Yeah, Steve. They see, my, they see my photo. Uh, they can vote for me. Yeah, according to he, I was twenty second most sexy man in the world. I better take that helmet back. I was. ACDC. Brilliant. You shoot me all night long on XFM 104.9. Well, this show is a rockin'. It is. It is. Mickey Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I came up with a new, uh, um, strand for Carl as well. He likes, he's always got, you know, we've done, uh, I don't think there's a week gone where we haven't mentioned an airy kid. A hairy right? child. Yeah, you're on. yeah. Uh, and, uh, some related to a monkey and that. And I thought you could do a regular thing where he's got to come up with a story about a, an ape or a, a, a monkey, and it's called Chimpanzee That. <laughs> of course. Of I, I, course. Have, I have got one, but I can't remember it at the moment, so I'll just have to It'll come to you whenever you've joined yeah. the show. Well, listen, while you're thinking about that, while you're stewing on that, here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. <laughs> We're taking uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or, you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you, it could be about anything, it could be about some of the big kind of philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that, or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have. You and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past, mm -hmm. and I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road, and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards, and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch them in the actual act of violence, which is what they've got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So, uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. It's rather like when a little old lady went and got the A-team, you know. The it's a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird, because now, now it has got out of hand. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, Summers were nice as well, weren't they? Well, <laughs> it did seem that way, didn't it? Yeah. Right, and- Police are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here, mean, the but- the thing is, I was- I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed floor, himself, <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door, and I thought, <laughs> oh god, this is the fellow who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of course and you he, were. He Did he keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down. Chucking a, a stone in the air, love it! <laughs> see how far I it's could brilliant. throw it. brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you invent it. that game? Right. Did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. He gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun, funny angle, and it ate, of course it, did. it ate the back of this, uh, Car and the and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it. Yeah. In case you got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked at the door. Genius! It's <laughs> a brilliant plan. It's a brilliant plan. <laughs> I couldn't be guilty. I'm asleep. So, so I love the idea. So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of you could you could see in from the door, right? So this family who uh, <laughs> I saw me do it. Let, saw me asleep on the settee, and my mum said, go and get the door, and I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. And went to the door, like, rubbing my eyes, and, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And I didn't see my dad, I went out, it was when he was working, sort of, evenings, so I went out so I didn't have to see my dad. And then the next day I came, I came home from school, and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said. That's what he looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, no, <laughs> 45 quid. No, the thing Carl, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But do you know what I mean? It's like, I knew I did wrong, uh, and I was scared that my dad was gonna belt me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll be more careful next but time. But that was that. clearly good parenting on the part of your father, because these young tykes, that, clearly they don't have the, uh, what the, do you do? the father's support. I don't even, I, I don't know if, if I If you were living help. in that street, very quickly, what would you do? What, what, would, what would your approach be? If you were living in his street? <laughs> what if, what if they'd come home, right, and they, they just vandalised all your pebbles, right, yeah. that you've been saving over the years, and just threw your gravel away? What would yeah. you do if they just- I'd probably clout one of them. So you'd use violence? I think it's the only way sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> the only way. And I don't, I don't mean, you know, really bad, but I'd, I'd show them that I'm not putting up with this. Right. And th then the problem is you've got their family coming round and they're probably quite- Go to sleep. If yeah. you hit a kid and the dad comes down, just go to yeah. sleep. Yeah. Just to- <laughs> so, yeah, um, equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, yeah. a bank job yeah. or a murder- Remember to take the stocking off your head, cause if they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. It won't work. It's like with, with our kid, right? He was, um, I told Ricky about this the other day in the, uh, in the pub, but- is, is this your brother? He never, yeah. Cause he, he was a terrible, isn't he? Well, yeah, a little bit, but it he was more- He did drive a tank down the, the high street once, didn't he? Yeah, that's when he was in the army. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, Another story. But, but this time, I remember, um, <laughs> my mum and dad were going out, right, for the evening. And, um, I must have been about, I don't know, five, so our mark was like, I don't know, s probably eighteen, yeah. something like that, seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So, my mum and dad go out, and our mark says to me, right, uh, here's a deal, do your little deal. I'm gonna have a load of, uh, women round. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, deal is, I'll let you have your tractor in the house. Wow, he had a tank, you had a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, yeah, but his brother didn't have the rocks that Carl had. No, no. So he needed the so tractor to put his on. toys what kind along. Of a man was he? He brought a bunch of women round. So, yeah, there was loads of, but do you know when you're a kid, you don't think, ooh, I know what they're up to. You're not bothered, are you? Do you know what I mean? You, as long as I've got my tractor, I'm happy. Yeah. So I was, I was- well, He actually hasn't changed a bit. But how many women did he have around? Was it just him and like a bunch of women? Yeah. Was it like, for, what's his name? What's his name? Like, like Nedwell from Confessions? Yeah, yeah, Confessions yeah. of an older well, brother. Just came around he, he liked orgy. his women. He, like, oh, seriously right, my mum and dad had to move because they got sick of women coming around saying, I've got a kid and it's your marks. They had to move because it got that on bath. Do you know, did you hear, when you were playing on your tractor and there was women running back and forth in underwear, did you ever hear this noise? <laughs> Did yeah. you ever hear that? Or a kind of wow 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 And just see your brother's arse disappearing down yeah, the exactly. thing being chased by a butcher. Did you ever- <laughs> it's, it's not important, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's gonna be like, do you think, when I'm voted number one most eligible bachelor in Great Britain? <laughs> yeah, and you're coming on your moped. <laughs> I mean, no, how am I gonna get a tractor? <laughs> During breaks, painkiller, open brackets, I don't know, summer rain, close brackets. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Rockbusters? To that time? It is yeah. indeed. Last week, of course, it was a disaster. Yeah, every, every Saturday at 16 minutes to two, we do <laughs> Rockbusters! <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have to say that by, I've not really gone through them, but the prizes look exactly the same as they were last week. Yeah. There's that t-shirt. So is There's a rollover, still... you haven't added to it. Have you not the point of a rollover is you've got to add to it, that's the excitement. Yeah, not there's, a, there's a couple of albums that were Okay, well it's okay. also the uh, Fools and Horses um, video with oh, the, the free- I don't think- I'm bloody jealous of that! <laughs> I like that! <laughs> yeah. Little yellow thing! It's a little, uh, there's a little kind of, um, model oh, three-wheeled van. Rodney, you plonker! Oh, <laughs> Ooh, dude. What's that? Uh, this is what looks to be some kind of best of of the stereo MCs. Don't call me a plonker, you <laughs> wanker! The David Attenborough DVD <laughs> collection- Oh, the hunk shit himself again! <laughs> Oh yeah, the big prize that we took to give away. Best you know. Who is that supposed to be an impression of? Which member of the cast is that? <laughs> oh. Is that Cheeky Dell? <laughs> I don't know. Best chill out album ever, the best Brilliant. guitar volume two. And of course, for all our fans, Doctor Who, The Aztecs. That's on DVD and that's uh, one of the William Hartnell <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, <I'm gonna> <laughs> all right. <laughs> that's the worst impression I've ever heard. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> right, uh, three, three, uh, cryptic <laughs> stuff. Oh, come on. Right, Rodney, what's the ambulance? Three, I, I can't do it. Come on! Right, three, uh, three, uh, cryptic, um, clues. <laughs> Some of which may be wrong. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, don't take the letters literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, go on. And, and some initials, and it makes up a, uh, makes up a band. So, um, <laughs> here we go then. Uh, there's three of them. You email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yep. Right, here we go then. Yep. Uh, number one. Uh, <laughs> the weather stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the weather stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's R. That's R. Right. The weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Second one. Um, <laughs> Look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. <laughs> Alright, give us that again. Look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. Look, oh. Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. What's yeah. the initial? R again. R again, interesting. Yeah. And then the third one, uh, <laughs> if you're gonna do that with your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. <laughs> CK. CK. Alright, so, so quickly, all the way through then. Number one, uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? That's <laughs> R. Uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out, will you? That's R as well. And then the last one, if you're gonna do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. C-K. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. Fantastic. Right, we'll have a bit of vinyl. Let's have a classic, let's have a classic from right. the, uh, the Merchant Collection. <laughs> For the moment, I like that. It's on right XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right, Carl. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter? Huh? Just um, you know what's the matter? What? Should I explain? I, if you want. I'm sort of an independent <laughs> adjudicator, and I couldn't help but notice that you both went out to make the teas. <laughs> But only one of you came back with a wig made out of that <laughs> poppy stuff that you pack. Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap, yeah. That you and pack. he didn't want me to do it with sellotape, so I kind of did it with elastic bands that I found. Uh, apparently it hurt his ear, it's cut into his head. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> look at him, he's annoyed. I don't know. Uh, uh, There's not many, uh, many times I've ever done, you know, any form of work, really, where halfway through it, you know, let's say a two-hour live radio show, one of the people has said to the other, can I make out of this big cardboard box a bishop's hat for you? Well, I did that, and I the- I start fashioning that, and, well, yeah, but, and the set the hurt his eyebrows, so when we went to the kitchen, I kind of did it with elastic bands, and that, that was cutting into his ear or something, I don't know, making excuses. <laughs> oh. Carl, you are here for Ricky Gervais' amusement. Hmm. I think oh, if you check the small print of your contract, have you got I mean, have you got anything interesting about a monkey or a, an ape so we can do chimpanzee that? I know something that a lot of other people will know, but I'll I'll Well, well let's do it then. Chimpanz chim what's it called again? Well should we do a jingle? Well <laughs> do a little jingle for us then. <laughs> oh chimpanzee that <laughs> Brilliant. That's great. Right. So I look forward to that every week. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's your uh, interesting chimp fact? fact? Right. It's about um this monkey ages ago. <laughs> of course. Uh, don't know where it happened. 17th century? I think it was a chimp. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> got caught having a fag. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. What do you mean, do I know it? Oh, now it down. Those got... are chimps are caught with wood vines. <laughs> right. He got having... caught having a fag. So it was sent to court. <laughs> and, uh. Was it underage? It was, it was, uh... And it got someone to go into the newsagent forum. Like, Did he get a bigger gorilla yeah, to go into the newsagent and get it 20 Rothmans? It ended up doing time. Because it was, it was... Go back a minute, minute. wait a minute, well, 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 No, well, I don't know the f that's, that's as much as I know, so there's no point questioning. That is as much as you know, isn't it? Quite literally. <laughs> Sorry, but why did he go to prison? Uh, it's, it's against the law to have a monkey having a fag. Where <laughs> In a built up area. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's against the law for a monkey to have a fag. What if he got it himself? Even if it just. What about if it, if it earned it himself, just like moving tyres around or mucky mucking out the zebras? I don't know the full story. That's you don't know the full story, do you? Well, do you think. <laughs> you never do, do you? I presume you? it was a monkey from a zoo, right? Yeah. Do you think it'd be fed up, though? Because in a way, it's home from home, isn't it? When I read it, I didn't think it was that bad because they just. Oh, they well, don't put monkeys in prison. They didn't put the monkey in a the prison. They're overcrowded. <laughs> they haven't got the space. Well, I'll, again, I'll find it and give you the, the like the, where I got it from. And you Trump can... Harris was furious because the monkey got the top bunk. Yeah. <laughs> can I just? Uh, <laughs> 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 
Okay, then. Oh, Jim Patsy, that. Another one next week. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> Rockbusters, right? Can I just, yeah. uh, recap? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, uh, actually, I have to say, you've really stumped people this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, either that or they God, just can't be bothered wrong. anymore. Well, or they're wrong again. No, no, right. Uh, I think the prizes are so pitiful they can't be asked. Let me just explain it again, just in case they don't understand it. It's a cryptic clue, right? right. And it makes up a band, and the initial that Sometimes. I give you is the initial that the band that all the artists starts off with. So, last week, uh, well, I can't remember, but we did we did AK, an exploding pet, atomic kitten. That explains yeah. it. So very quickly, uh, number one. No, last week right. we did uh, FP uh, that you gave out the clue. FD, Frida Payne. Yeah, it was uh, it was an error. So um, the they're all right one, this week, though, are they? Yeah. The weather stinks, doesn't it? That's that's the cryptic clue, and the letter is R. Uh, number two. That's the rainy smell, boys. Right. Uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out, will you? Uh, that's R as well. And the last one, if you that's gonna rig do, that's rigging nanny. <laughs> if you're going to do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. That's C K. Right. Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Plus, keep your uh, problems and queries coming in for Carl. We've got another one as well, which I'd like to give you after the next track, Carl, if I may. All right. All right. You've got a problem, haven't you? What with? Oh yeah. Listen, listen to this, Carl. Let's play a record. Let's come back with this. Oh. It's an amazing problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a god awful small affair. Wow. You're getting celebrities asking me questions now, Carl. That's David Bowie. Is there life on Mars? Mm. Do you reckon? Uh, I reckon there's more going on than just us. <coughs> messing about. I reckon. I hope so. I think. Tell Steve your problem that you were, you aired to me. Well, um, do you know how like I'm always thinking about stuff when I'm washing up? Mm. Um, I'm just, yeah. just going to look at Steve for the reaction when this okay. question comes out. Okay. There's been a few things I've been thinking about. Do you know like how I try to confuse a computer by putting in Y in the search engine? Yeah. So I was in, along the lines of that, I, I, I was thinking in the week, if uh, you put a chameleon on a mirror, what would happen? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and also, this, this is a bit of a bigger issue. We're always making more and more stuff, right, um, in the world, you know, big buildings. Big planes, mm -hmm. big boats, and that. Will we ever get to a point where all this is too heavy for the world to handle? Right. What errors he made there, Steve? <laughs> what physical, scientific error has he made there with that question? I can't. I can't begin to explain it. Carl, we're not getting the rocks from other planets. <laughs> it's already here. It's like having a. a it's like having. Um, a big pile of books in a room, and then moving them over to the other side of the room and build a thing going, oh, can the room take it? I'm building a lot of things out of these books. What about, what about plastic? Where's that come from? Are the chemicals that existed on the planet. Yeah. Do you see, do, do you see the point? Hang on a minute, though. What about a little tree? You plant that as an acorn, it grows, right? That's bigger, that's more stuff. Yeah. Don't listen to him, Carl. He's patronising you. What about you. acorns and that, though? Right. They they take they grow from minerals and proteins already in our atmosphere or in our um the mass of Earth. What about a cat, Carl? Right, you get it. It's a very tiny kitten, but it grows up and it's bigger. Carl, he's he's doing it on purpose. Elephants. The elephants. They they're very small to begin with, but they get bigger and bigger and bigger until they get heavier and heavier. Mind you, dinosaurs have gone. You know, but. You <laughs> But you know, um, but you know that's, uh, you know famously that's how Atlantis <laughs> disappeared. You know, you've heard of the, the legend of Atlantis. Have you heard of the legend of Atlantis? I think so. Go this on. was a, this was a city that existed, it's proven, yeah. right? And what happened was they just kept buying stuff in, mail order. They just kept ordering stuff, like the king and stuff, just kept ordering stuff in mail order. He brought girls across, carpets, you know, carpets, lot of carpets. carpets he kept buying, TV set, big screen TVs and stuff like that, and eventually... He bought up all the mirror. That the wise men didn't want. Yeah, he just, cause he's from like olden times, and he just kept buying stuff, crazy, like he was just a shopaholic basically. Mentor it was. And he was ludicrous, it was like, and, and in and the end it just heavy. sunk, it just sunk. Too heavy. And it just sunk. So, um, um, to the earth, the more planes we build, the more trees we let grow. Yeah. From acorns. And more than that, what about all the, uh, the people that are overeating? There's only, there's a, yeah, I, there's only yeah, one thing to do. in this world. I think we, we've got, a, I think we've got to kill off endangered species and burn trees. <laughs> That's the only way the earth <laughs> can survive. <laughs> you mental. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> right. Uh, okay, look, quick um, query for you. This is from uh, Jay. He's got a problem here. 
Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do. So he's got the arranged marriage coming along, and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think Live the, your dreams? the arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I think too many people go on looks. Right. And then you soon get bored of that, mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with. It's actually not your type. Right. No. Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right, so I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then, you know, don't go along with it, but if they're half bad, yeah. put up with it. That's sure. right. The dancing. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> that's, that's solved. Brilliant. I like to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's went along, I wanted to learn some moves. How old were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was like, pretty big, so, about 80, 83, 84, 85, oh, yeah. something like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it, um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for a toilet rolls. <laughs> so in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? <laughs> Well, you I'm told me before, you you did boxing for a while, and you did dancing for a while. You had a true fight in the boxing, you didn't <laughs> even get in the pl That's not an you yeah, well, Imagine if that was a film! This is a, a, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you, how is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he won, it, <laughs> he won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, a brilliant. Footloose. All right? Yeah. I'm fed up, they've banned it. Let's go. Oh, it's shut. Um, <laughs> yeah. do, 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 do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was. Oh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I, can't, I think I got a go kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go kart and kept myself busy with that. So. <laughs> There's always, there's always other this things. This thing, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yeah. yeah. He uh, just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's uh, that. So that's, that's all. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional, there emotional problems I can foresee, uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice Sorry, there is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not If she's not ugly. minging. Yeah. If she's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing, get a go-kart, please. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Keep your problems coming in. <laughs> Truth, Rest Your Head by Gene on XFM 104.9, which is your Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. While I was, uh, with Carl in that restaurant, while I was giving him the, uh, you know, the problems that the old fellow with Viagra and the, the two fellas making love mm -hmm. in the, uh, in the cubicle, um, we came up with a new idea, um, cause he, he, he's dumping, um, do we need him? As I say, these think societies have got together, they're never going to wipe out a limpet or a, or a slug. Um, they, they, they think they're good, but they're not that good. This is people that are lauded as great minds, or, and Carl has brought them down. He's taken issue with them. Uh, like what? He went, right, um, great thinkers, and I went, okay, then, um, Sir Isaac Newton, the, the father of modern physics, he went, is he the fellow with the apple? I went, yeah. He went, there again, see? Why do I need to know that the Earth sucks us towards it, gravity? He said, if I was floating around, it would be a problem, I'd ask his opinion. <laughs> I went, what about Einstein? He went, again, I've never needed, and this is what he said, I've never needed MC squared in my life. <laughs> the fella who invented the video, I watch one a day. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Give credit where credit's due. Right. And I think that a lot of this stuff that was invented, like when we were talking about inventions, you know, I uh, started to look, look in books and that, finding stuff out, and there was some fella who got a mention on, on an invention site just because he came up with the fishbowl. And it's like, is it that hard? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's clearly a bowl. Sorry, you're, you're not putting him in the same category as Newton and Einstein, are you? He was on the same list. Einstein was on there. It was saying about him doing that, and Newton with the apple. And, uh, who else was in there? Da Vinci, whatever. He, he was Leonardo on there. Da Vinci. Yeah. Um, uh, is he the so, one who did Mona Lisa as well? Yeah. Yeah. 
He said he said it took him twelve years to paint the lips. <laughs> I don't think that's like that good. That it takes that long. I saw you know when you think saw Tony Art do like a an Aborigine man with a <laughs> elephant in the background in about three minutes. <laughs> Aborigine, <laughs> an Aborigine, yeah. really, an yeah. elephant. So what about some of the big names? Just, on, what's, your, what's, your, what's your first reaction when I say some big names from history? Go on. Gandhi. Uh, again, what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Right. Good point. Good point. Okay. Good point. But you do, well, yeah, all right. Do you, do you understand what he represents? Well, go on, tell me and then I'll tell you if he deserves to but, you be know, mentioned. His, his whole kind of attitude towards peaceful, peaceful protest, you know, it's quite a sort of modern idea, you know, you know, very much the forefather of, you know, uh, the 60s movement, you know, where people would sort of sit in. You know, and protest, you know, Steve, song Steve, perhaps Steve, over Steve, Steve, Look at look the glazed look on his Did face. Did I lose him on Gandhi? Yeah. Yeah. So if just, it's Pick not- someone else, do someone else. Pick someone else. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, someone you know about this, obviously, um, oh, let's think, a great, a great thinker, isn't part of Kingdom Brunel. Right. Yeah, he's alright. Brilliant, thanks. Um, <laughs> what about- What about Jesus uh, Christ? Well, I'm thinking more your modern day, like your Richard Branson's and that. Okay. Who like, you know. I would, to be fair, I wouldn't put Branson up there with, with Gandhi. Christ, Newton, and Christ, Einstein. Einstein. But why? Stephen Hawking. Because he's mainly known for having a beard and a funny jumper. To yeah, you have to start including, uh, no, Noel that's, Edmunds. that's Noel Edmunds, yeah, you're, you're getting mm. confused there. But Branson's a businessman, he's not one of the great, sort of, you know, scientific yeah, minds. I think or in time, thinkers. right, in time. Whereas Clive Sinclair, in his little car, <laughs> on his way to work, brilliant. No, but in time, there's certain things, like the apple falling off a tree, Right. Whoever was sat there would have gone, that's a bit odd. Do you know what I mean? It's just that yeah. they were there first. But to be fair, Christ instigated 2,000 years of, um, religion based on his teachings. Richard Branson, to be fair, he did launch Mike Oldfield's Tubular Bells. Yeah, They're see not the quite difference. comparable. See it, the just, difference there. It, it depends what you get impressed by, doesn't it? Suzanne's always saying- Maybe I- maybe Newton was there, he was coming up with a brilliant theory. Like, amazing, he was probably inventing the helicopter, right? The apple hit him in the air and he went, uh, the earth's sucking me. The earth suckling me. Do, yeah. do you know what I mean? Could have happened. But so, you know, my girlfriend's always saying, uh, you know, what impresses you? Yeah. You know, because she was saying the other day, do you want to go to Egypt? And I said, no, not really. No. She goes, but don't you want to see the pyramids? Not interested. It's like I've seen them on the telly. Uh, okay. You know, sure. are they going to be that much more amazing when you see them yeah, in real good life? Point, good point. Good point. Uh, How did you ever move out of your street in Manchester? But hang on, no, sorry, I'm interested to know because this is a, this is something that um, that he came up with, and this is someone that loves him and that he respects. So I'm interested to see what what was your answer to what impresses you? Um, I don't think I did answer it. I just said, you know, the odd the odd. Thing. <laughs> you just said I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> little things, little things like I, I ran home the other night and said, oh, I've just learnt something today. She goes, go on. And, um, do you know Lego bricks? Oh, yeah. The name came about because some kid's mum, the kid was messing with the bricks and she said, Lego of them and come and have your dinner. Play record. It's got to be rubbish. It's got to Play be rubbish. Record. It's always rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They're Scandinavian for a start. So, so it's it's Scandinavian. Like, there's no <laughs> Lego. <laughs> Boys are back in town. Thin Lizzy, what a classic. Beautiful. Carl, should that be our anthem, me, you and Steve, eh? Eh? <laughs> yeah? Can I just go get a bit, a couple of bits of admin out of the way? Go on. We've had an email from Peter Goff. He has said, uh, where is Richard Anderson? Where he, is Dickers? He only tunes in to listen to him. Where's Dickley? Where's enough. Little Dicky Docker? Little Dicky Anders has not uh, emailed in. If you don't listen normally, uh, Anders is our biggest fan. He Always loves awesome. us. He lo I, I just absolutely But he's normally the world got a little bit of constructive criticism. Oh, right, Which we no, always appreciate. Not, yeah, yeah, we're open to that. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. Rob, so, you! I'm gonna shove this up your- <laughs> so if Dicky Anders is uh, listening, then he might want to uh, get in touch. Uh, also, uh, d d dear Ricky, I've developed a bit of a fetish for the way you say winnersh in uh, your hit sitcom, The Office. Um, I'm trying <laughs> to get my fiance to say it, but he hasn't quite mastered it yet. Anyway, we're getting married in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks' time. Could you please say winnersh on air uh, as a sort of yeah, it's wedding be, it's present? It's becoming one of the most popular requests at weddings now. <laughs> the, me saying winnersh. So uh, winnersh. There's a few I didn't get in. Um, Thatcham, <laughs> Shinfield. <laughs> so there's there's a, a Woodley. There you are. There you go. That's uh, that's beautiful. That's keeping uh, them happy. Good luck to them. That's uh, I did the, 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 the Leopard Le Leopard. I saw one of those stupid email names. If you're going to email us, at least mention your name, because otherwise uh, it makes me sound like a, a fool. Leopard, the original name for a giraffe. Interesting. Thanks for that. Whereas Lego 
was yes. uh, a event when a mother had sent someone to get some, though there's no name for them, she went, can you go and get some? There was a gap, he went, yeah. oh yeah, I'll go and get some, because they weren't called cool anything. Brought them back, started playing with her. <laughs> and then she went, look, give me those. He went, no, she went, let go, you idiot. Yeah, the actual explanation, various people have emailed us in or phoned in now. The company was set up in 1934, it's a Danish company, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Lego comes from the Danish words leg got, which means play well, and it was later discovered that it was also a Latin phrase that meant I study or I put together. That's the actual, uh, where well, did you get that from? But the thing is, you see, that's where learning's got to be interesting, because if it even started like that, I'd just go, I'm not interested. Mm. I'd be looking for Oh! It. So if a, f a fact might be true, but it's just not good enough. It's, it's not interesting enough for you. Not interesting enough. Okay, another quick right. dilemma for so you, So if, if, if uh, Newton would have said, uh, apples are attracted to our heads, be careful, they, they attack you, that would have been interesting. Yeah. Total bollocks, but you'd have been interested, therefore, in all modern physics. <laughs> Alright? <laughs> um, here's another dilemma for you, a quick one from Kate. She says that she's a single woman, she's six foot tall. Uh, recently she's found herself being approached by men of, let's say, restricted height, and she's not desperate. But is it ever acceptable in her, you know, she wants to know now, is it ever acceptable for a tall lady to go out with a person of restricted growth? Uh, what do you think about that? If you see that on the street, do you think it looks bizarre, do you think it looks odd? Or so a six foot with woman with, um... Someone of a, a dwarfish persuasion. <laughs> you can, we can't say sort of that, or, 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 the, or the midget word, but you I mean, that, no, as a, little, a little, a little, a little, a little, um, a little fella. Yeah. Is that, uh, so there's a noticeable uh, difference in their height, is that ever a problem do you she's, think? Uh, she's six foot, he's three foot four. If I saw it, I'd just think she's doing it. Okay, know. okay, let's not do this now. No, 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 come on, she's doing it what? Oh. No, for, for attention in a way. <laughs> because right. there's loads of other See, people. See, I told you, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm just, just, I mean, is that serious? I think so. Well, oh, I mean, if it, whatever God, makes you happy. Please don't ask Carl no, these sort of questions. No, but do you know what I mean? If it makes her happy, then do it, but in a way, you're not gonna have a normal life. Oh, God. <laughs> no, but you're not, because you're gonna get sick. I'm There's no so point bringing sorry. trouble onto yourself. Carl does not necessarily reflect the opinions of, of anybody the else in the world. <laughs> 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 Hold on. This woman, she doesn't live in a forest in a little <laughs> cottage, does she? She hasn't got long black hair and wears a sort of. She says the guy she's going out with is a miner. In really? a crystal mine, yeah. And he just sings all day on his own. Has way he to got work. six mates? Apparently so. That, yeah. Okay, wasn't it that, Carl? I'm, I'm still th sorry, I'm listening. I was just was thinking about. Someone just called up and called him dopey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't uh, they? I mean, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Why? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you today? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm what, big, what? You're fed up with people um, uh, uh, taking issue with some of the stupid things you say. Lego was invented by a mother going, let go of that. What are we going to do with all the buildings? The earth might collapse. What do you expect people to say? Well, Even our listeners know you're talking rubbish. And some of those that aren't allowed to wear socks. I mean... Listen, right, last week when I did Do We Need Em, um, do you know when I called up, um, one of the museums in a science museum? Yeah, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I wanted to tell you before when the song was on, but you're so busy listening to it. Yeah, oh, God, to... oh, was I? So busy listening to a song I was playing. Yeah, but we're doing a radio show, aren't All right, we? what's your point? <laughs> well, I just wanted to say, she emailed in to say I got her name wrong, so I'm just apologising for that. What did you just call her? I think I called her Jessica. What was her name? I don't know, I've got it on email somewhere. Well, this is not an apology! <laughs> no, no, I'm You've just got saying... it wrong again! You've not even said her real name! How is that an apology? Well, I remember, I read the email, so, uh, yeah, I-, I But I, I, who are you apologising to? Apologising to? I think her name's Jackie, I think. Oh, you've got it wrong again, haven't ya? You well, uh, well anyway, and she just said if you, you know, if you want to see dinosaurs and that, go to the, uh, museum. You were complaining about that as well, weren't you? You went to a museum and there was too many dinosaurs. You just, he said you just need four. <laughs> no, well, Steve, have you been to the one at, <laughs> in Knightsbridge? I think this so. This one that I called up, right? It's nice, you go in, you get a good collection of stuff, you walk in, there's three or four dinosaurs, you've had enough, right? <laughs> go to, I went into New York, right, went to the museum there, hundreds of them. You can't move for dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like they're responsible for them being extinct. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads of them. So all I'm saying is, if you want to see a dinosaur, uh, go to the one near Knightsbridge. They've got a nice selection, some old vases and stuff. <laughs> it's worth going. So, do you uh, work for them? Because that was a pretty big sell. Well, that, 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 you could work that into quite an advert, I imagine. <laughs> Brilliant, Carl. Oh, what, you're fed up, aren't you? Because you had to get up early. 
Well, that's another thing, but let's- will we give out the answers for- Let's do that after we play the next tune. Um, I have to say that the- I'm wondering if Rockbusters, like Do We Need Em, is beginning to run its course, because yeah. this week we've had very, very few right answers. I think well, you're just you, getting too complicated. Yeah, because this- this clues and his answers are rubbish! Why don't you start doing proper ones? These are good. We started off easy. I don't remember. know, these are- I think some of them are a bit tortuous. They but don't anyway. work! Some of them don't work! Well, come up with some stuff then. Let's play a tune. Well I have! And uh, we'll come back with the Rockbusters answers <laughs> in a second. You haven't come up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> the grave diggers. 1-800-SUICIDE, it's a good tune though. I've always yeah. enjoyed it. XFM 104.9. Well that's nearly it from uh, Ricky Gervais, that's me, Steve Merchant. One of the 50 most eligible bachelors in Britain. I hope people as well, if you buy Company Magazine, if there's any ladies listening, every week of course I've played you a song for the ladies, and I hope now that you'll be able to return the favour and maybe vote for me, buy Company Magazine, vote for me, so I become, uh, 50, the, the, the number one That's eligible true, bachelor. That wouldn't mean anything then, would it? What do you mean? Well, it wouldn't mean anything then, would it? If they voted you and you got, even got into you know, the top 30, it wouldn't mean anything because you've asked them to do it. What are you talking about? Cause well, it, because because it means that they care for me enough and that they are impressed and charmed by enough that they've actually made that effort. That's beautiful. That's I, beautiful think that, I think that would ruin it. <laughs> well, you know, let's wait and see what the results are. Do you think? Do you think? What do you? I mean, just uh, you know, I'm mean, getting off that, you know, because we don't want Steve to use as a platform to get in the top forty-eight. That's bound to. He's bound to be a couple of people. Um, but uh, what do you think of him now, Carl? Now you've known him for these many years. I mean, what do you think of his looks objectively now that you've known him? Can you remember what you first thought? He, like I say, he's changed a bit. He's sorted himself out a bit. Yeah. Looks a bit better. How? What's he done? What's he I done? I don't know. His hair's better. Yeah, what was it before? It was just a bit nothing -y. Do you know what I mean? It was like a... Just like if you just let your hair grow and do its own thing. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas now it's got a style. Yeah. So yeah. it looks good. Glasses, he's changed. His glasses are stylish. Yeah. Um, just stay sat down. <laughs> right, rockbusters, rockbusters. Some people like tall men. <laughs> yeah, go on. That's yeah. Uh, right. right, first one. Uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. That was R, which was rainbow. Right. Rainbow. Like, like rain is the weather, and it smells like bow. Body bow? odor. Body odor. This no, it's bo. It's bo. That's it's bo. -B -O. Well. Yeah, but you've got a play- It's not pronounced Bo, and it's not spout Bo. Um Who calls it Bo? Everyone knows it's B-O. Um <laughs> What, you don't care? You don't care that, that doesn't work? Well, they got it, so again, as long one as One person it, got as it, long Carl. As getting it. One person got it. Of all the emails, one person got it. Um second one. Uh look, Gran, just get on the boat, will you, and help us out. Go on. That was R. That was Ronan. Ronan, right? Ronan, who's Ronan? <laughs> Ronan. Ronan, who's Ronan? Ronan? Ronan Keaton. But he's known well, as Ronan Keaton. Keaton. No, it's okay. not. No, it's not anymore though. He's gone on, on his own, hasn't he? He's just known as Ronan. No, he's not. No, he's not. It's Ronan Keaton. He's always been known as Ronan Keaton. All right. Um, <laughs> so that doesn't work on there. Go on. Third one. <laughs> Next. Uh, if you're going to do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a little bit before you open it. That was CK. What? Shake a can. Shake a can. If you're going to shake, <laughs> you can. <laughs> this is the worst competition ever. <laughs> So it's Chaka. Have, have you got? A it's Chaka. It's Chaka. It's Chaka Khan. Shake Khan. No, Chaka Khan. What you got? Chaka Khan might have worked. It's, to throw a can. Who got all three right then? Well, well, because basically what happened was people we're just emailed this. in three guesses. We're stopping and this. The, and the guesses that were right came from Mandy Thompson in Hendon. That's ruined that. Frankly, well, that's that's run that into the ground. That's do we need him ruined? No, we can't that's, just bin everything. That's on that's one week. that's. Uh, I I don't think we're gonna get that. Oh, they're not as good as they think they are because you're only picked on Newton Einstein. You don't know anyone else. You don't know who Gandhi is. Um, uh, chimpanzee that you've you've run out of. Uh, I did like, like the man. jingle for that though. <laughs> oh, chimpanzee that. That was a great jingle. Yeah, but sadly um, we won't be able to use that again. So who's won anyway? Well, it was Mandy Thompson I mentioned, but as I say, she guessed, so I mean, she can have the prizes, she's welcome to them. But, uh, go. I think we should knock it on the head, Carl, maybe she should come up with something yeah. new. No, I think it's still got a few weeks in it. I think we should ta take some time off. Well. <laughs> yeah. What about, like, the foreseeable future? Dunno. Song for the lovers, do you want to just play song for the ladies, one? listen, um, you know what's a, you know, I think it's maybe the March issue of Company Magazine. Buy that, uh, top 50 most eligible people, there's probably an address or a phone number to call. And here's another song for the ladies, maybe just to charm you further. Tom the Model by Beth Gibbons and Rustin Man. Carl, say goodbye and say it, say it nicely like you're happy. See you later. Oh, 
اصل وشید بعدی جون بای بارون اگین هن اکس افم 104.9 ایوی آر دن ریکی جوائیز ویز می ستیف مرچن اند کارل پلکنتن رارین تو گو ایز ابیت گرمپی کارل Woken up because he's from the north. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's in London, <laughs> yeah. and London's rubbish, right? Isn't it? <laughs> oh, where can you? You can't even get a band aid in London, can you? Or grouting <laughs> in Manchester, I could walk to the next shop and definitely get get some flash or maybe some vim. You can't get it down there. You got to go to a trendy bistro, haven't you? Carl, why are you grumpy? I told you before, I'm just a little bit tired today. Because he had to get up at the builders next door woke him up. No, He's always going about his hours. Those bu builders probably got up at six. Yeah, but to I get can understand I builders who, who get up early because they're building outside and they've got to get the job done before it gets dark, but he's working in someone's lounge. If it gets dark, put the light on. It's not, it's not a problem. So why is he starting work at like seven o'clock in the morning? Well, because the builders get paid by the day. And if you get a bill there and go, I'll just do eleven till three, he's not gonna go, I tell you what, love, just give me a, just give me forty quid. I didn't do a whole day. It's a day's work, isn't it? So you want to get the most out of them, don't you? Plus, he probably wants to finish early so he can have a good night out. Yeah, it's a Saturday night, you know what I mean? He wants to- Yeah, he wants to get at least fifteen it, pints in. And he was cheery, I bet he was whistling and, you know, dancing yeah, yeah, around dancing and tapping to, to, you know, so I don't know why, how you can be annoyed at that. Why don't you get earplugs? I don't like it, the idea of earplugs. Why? Because I live in a flat, so it's not as if I'm looking after my house, right? I I know. Already? Already? I've lost you. No. That wasn't even a whole sentence and I don't know what you're talking about. No, but what I mean is, what? if you live in a house, right, you know that you've turned the lights off downstairs, you know you've, you've, you haven't got a frying pan on, right? Right. So, okay, not really. Keep, 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 keep going. But I live in a flat and I don't know what the other people are like, there might be some daft people in there who, who God, don't. imagine that. Right? Who don't turn stuff off. Now if I have earplugs and the fire alarm's going off, yeah. I'm not gonna hear it, I'm gonna have a good sleep, but who knows what could happen. So <sighs> I don't- I don't like earplugs. It's not- it's not safe. Okay. If you live in a block of flats. But I think you'll find, cause I've used them, I think you'll find that a fire alarm will cut through I the wear earplugs. them sometimes, uh, if it's it, it noisy or I wanna go to bed early or something, and I hear my alarm clock and it's- it's- it is- it goes- <laughs> It's All that right, loud. Then. Okay. Well, a, a fire alarm is deafening. All right. So we've talked in the past about snails who sleep for thirteen years. No, you have. That's never been confirmed. In fact, the expert didn't hadn't heard of it. The, well, they do. Okay. I, I read it on different sites. Okay. okay. So how much does it take to wake them up? <laughs> <laughs> Got you. What do you mean? <laughs> Well, they sleep for thirteen years. Yeah, but it's probably. But I don't know what you mean by sleep. It's not the same sort of pattern that we have on a in a mollusk, is it? It's different. What what is sleep? It's it. It's, it's, when, it's when you're sort of shut down, and but they can estivate. They can actually literally. No, shut but they didn't down say like that. They said they sleep. They sleep for thirteen years. <laughs> <laughs> and if, I bet. I, I mean, have you ever had like more than ten hours sleep? Yeah. Feel really groggy. Well, yeah. no, I feel good after ten hours sleep. I feel rough. I just was thinking what a snail would be like. Be like, oh. Be even slower than normal. Be even slower than you. <laughs> Play a record. Well, anyway. He married yeah. if you know what earth Carl's talking about. Ever. Yeah. Don't erase none of that good shit. The rhyme came from the pressure of heat, then it was laid out on the ground of paved streets. Wu Tang Clan. Who's here on XFM 104.9? Because of A. Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington. We got a lot. We got a lot to get through. We got a lot to get through. We got things like uh, Radiohead to play. We got Feeder. We got you know Teenage Fan Club. You sure. know we got sure. we got two new competitions, Steve. Go on. A great one coming up. A film competition. I'm excited. That's great and uh, uh, a music based competition. Is it right to say that Rockbusters is no longer? We've still got Rockbusters. We've really? Still, it's hanging yeah, on yeah, by yeah. the oh, skin what? of its teeth. I thought we got rid of. That. I genuinely th I thought we'd all agreed that we got rid of that. Robin. No, no, I think I think we should do it. I think people like Nobody it. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. It's because he got his name in Heat. Now it's, it's no, tricky to vote Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington and the Heat said they like Rockbusters. That's why. Carl, I thought we had a he's meeting. He agreed that it was not going to happen anymore. He's well, worried about the fans. There's a guy here emailed in. He just emailed in three band names. He said, "I may as well email in now on the off chance these are right because it's such an arbitrary quiz." Yeah, it's essentially a waste of time. The clues are so F complicated. D. Free de pain. <laughs> that was a classic. That was a classic <laughs> rockbuster, wasn't it? <laughs> when, when when they start getting a bit ridiculous and that, and people aren't getting them. Oh, then we'll. You can't drink that pop now. Shaka Khan. 
<laughs> no. That well, was another piece of genius. Well, um, it, it, I think we've already reached that stage, Carl, to be I've truthful, I've only mate. just got in this river, and there's loads of logs. Justin Timber, like you said, river. <laughs> like you said, river. Like you said, river. Um, <laughs> just few of the highlights of Rockbuster. Can you please promise that this is the last one today? Because it's really, I think it's just, it's bringing the show down. As, as Steve, he can't promise he remember the answers today. How can he promise <laughs> what's gonna happen next week? <laughs> right. I think it's got legs in it. Let's just see how it goes next week. You're not gonna bring it back next week. It's gotta be finished. We've gotta put an end to it. We've gotta give it a sort of... Final sending one. Okay, let's, let's, let, I'll tell we've you what. We've got to smother it, Carl, for its own I, good. I do, I do want to trial this new film quiz we've got, because it's, it, it's, I mean, I'm excited. I think it's the, the best competition we've come up with, to mm. be quite honest. I mean, Carl, it, you, you agree, don't you? It's, it's all right, yeah. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a film-based quiz. Right. Uh, there'll be a, we'll, we'll play you a clip from a, a classic film. I can tell you the film we're gonna play, it's The Sixth Sense. Right. And there'll be a, a, a question after and you can win the sixth sense. On DVD? Yeah, not, not the ability to sort of tell when someone's behind you, <laughs> just no. this film. You know, you know. Do you believe in sort of like, extrasensory sort of perception and stuff, Carl? Ghosts and that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course uh, you do, of course you do. Not uh, ghosts, no, the fact that people maybe can sense, uh, you know, beings. There was a woman in on the Christian's breakfast show, right? Yeah. Blind woman. Right. Uh, clairvoyant. Is that her name? Uh, forgot. But she, she was a bit useless. Um, <laughs> she was a bit right useless. Now, we're, oh, as it, I'm always worried about what's gonna come yeah, out of Carl's mouth. Yeah, I'm worried what you mean. What? Do you know what I mean? She's a bit rubbish at being a clairvoyant. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I think if you're not that good at something, don't, don't go on the radio and do it. Carl, you better leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, sorry. Well, she was saying So like, what was the relevance of her being uh, blind? What was that for? What did you say? So it was a bit weird. I think she was using that because the fact that she can't see living people, but she can contact the dead ones. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm when so when sorry. This is XFM 104.9. No, Once again, to you. Carl's opinions do not necessarily reflect, reflect those anyone. Of, those of any human no, beings. Any other person alive today. Sorry, yeah, Carl. So why, why, wh how did she demonstrate her, her clairvoyance? Right, why was, was it not very convincing? She was sat in the chair you're at, mm -hmm. right? And people called Ooh, up and said, I sense uh, that. Weird. Said, um, they called up and they said, right, uh, can you, uh, have a word with me, Gran? Yeah. And, uh, she goes, yeah, she's dead, isn't she? And it's like, yeah. She goes, ooh, and everyone's like, ooh, she knows the stuff. <laughs> it was literally 50, to be fair. Yeah. And especially with a Gran, because the person sounded about 35, so the chances are... Yeah. ...they haven't got a Gran anymore. Yeah. Um, and it was just... Unless sort of it's like... the fellas from Busted, because they, in the year 3000, it's only, they've only got to a great-great-granddaughter, and that's a thousand years, so, presumably, you know, they can live a lot longer. Yeah. I just wasn't convinced, anyway. I don't want to diss her, because, you know, she came in, and she did her stuff, and, and if people believe in it, I'm not gonna put it down, but it just was a little you bit You believe in it? You just think she didn't have the real power, as opposed to it being rubbish? No, whatever. <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't know what we were talking about there. So we've got the film thing going <laughs> <earlier. laughs> I don't know what we were talking about. Film. What were you talking about earlier about glasses as well and Steve taking his glasses off? What was that? What are you saying that in front of him now for? Was it, oh, was it an insult? It wasn't really an insult. Carl, what were you up to? No, what was it? I genuinely don't remember. I, I genuinely don't remember. Well, I just, right, Steve, I'm not, I'm not having a go, right? Um, just saying our people, um, it's a bit weird that you've got glasses because you've got a good pair of eyes on you, right? <laughs> That, that isn't an insult. <laughs> what were you talking about though? What was it, why did it you- It was the fact that people who wear glasses always look a bit weird without them on. It's, it's like, you know, they, they, were, they should have, they should wear glasses. I- Okay, why did we get round to this? What was we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that was. It sounds like an insult, even it wasn't no, intended as one. it wasn't. It sounds it like an insult, Carl. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, it wasn't. I should listen. be like to punch you every time you insult me, no? <laughs> no, but I'm not- oh, I'm doing it. I'm gonna give you a dead arm. Look, Steve, it's, it's, it's huge. Like you always- Even if it wasn't, you intended it to be one. Oh, what you- <gasps> Oh! That was real. Play a record. Yeah. That's, That's mad. Yeah, That's before. mad. Oh, is this the cardigans? Great. Brilliant. I didn't yeah. even say anything. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. I can enjoy the rest of the show. for 104.9.
what it's worth, though, in my opinion, one of the best things I've done for many a year. It's XFM 104.9. Because you're with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Cayman Pilkington. <laughs> I sometimes wish you spoke like that for real, because <laughs> I, so I wouldn't leave the studio with a headache then. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, see? It's just come stinging back. <laughs> oh, dear. A lot of people sort of, I meet from the street, they go, I wish I was Ricky Gervais's mate. No, you don't. <laughs> Let me put your mind at rest now. You're not missing anything, am I right, Carl? Who says that walking along the street? <laughs> no, people With that Ellen said. They shut up. Dude, 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 what are you thinking? <laughs> oh, just thinking. I wish I was Ricky Gervais's mate. Well, no, I've, I've met people that are friends of friends. Yeah, or... It must be fun to be yeah, really, exactly. in, a, in, a, a great in an enclosed space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In an echoey small oh, space. Oh, imagine sharing a prison cell with Ricky. <laughs> oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it, Carl? <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. Would well, I be the daddy, wouldn't I? I hate it. <laughs> the suicide you... rate in the prison would shoot to the roof. Yeah. <laughs> now come over here and suck mummies. Now listen. What right. do you reckon, Carl? Through you know, being Ricky's friend, did you find that an exhilarating experience? Something that you enjoyed before? It, to? It's all right for about an hour, and then anything over that is when he's just messing about and he wants to hit me on the head with a tray. We or, went. Uh, we went for lunch yesterday, didn't we? That was more than an hour, wasn't it? Yeah. And we had a drink in the week, didn't we? And that was more than an hour, wasn't it? That was that was a good. Is uh, he okay when he's when it's just the two of you? Because I find as soon as there's a third person, well, yeah, just to give he you just starts showing off. Well. There's a little bit of that, right? But I went out with Ricky, like he said, right, for a drink in a week, and uh, you know, I went home, and Suzanne, the girlfriend, said, uh, "Where have you been?" I said, I've "Been out for a drink with Ricky." Hey, you've been out for a while. What have you been talking about? I'm fr I sort of, sort of sat there for a minute and thought, "There's nothing that I can tell her we've been talking about that she'll show any interest in." <laughs> she said, "Well, you must remember something." I said, "I can't. I can't." She goes, no, something, just anything that you're talking about, what are you talking about? I said, right, the one I remember, <laughs> one of the topics that came up was, imagine that the only way to have a kid was you had to sleep with a squid. <laughs> How many kids would you have? I would say it was the future and the squid's taking over, the only way they could do it now is like a filter, you had to sleep with a squid, I was going, would you? He's going, what do you mean? <laughs> I was going, would you? He said, there's not a time he hasn't gone home with a conversation, it, it, buzzing in his head that he got confused about. Would anyone want a kid that much? <laughs> Does, does the child look like a squid when you have it, or is no, it a regular No, it's not. I was going, no, no, it's, it's normal, but it's like a filter with a system. The only way you can do it to make sure, you know, you have to imp you know, you have to impregnate the squid, and it's a filter, and then you can, you know, test your baby in the future. Did the busted <laughs> lads mention that? <laughs> <laughs> he did, but he did live underwater, that's yeah, where I got it from. Yeah. I said, well, you'd probably sort of like get quite friendly with him, but eventually you probably would be breeding with the squids and, you know, So what does, prawns. what does Suzanne make of Javex? Has she met him a few times? Yeah, she just said, oh, she can understand why we sort of get on, because we both <laughs> sort of come up with daft stuff all the time, and... Yeah. But I'm quite happy to have a discussion. I love the way that it, it, it talks about his partner like the adult. Well, I like, thought we're that's the how two see kids it. that go out playing that's talking not, about squids. That is exactly how I see Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if, if she wasn't there, I don't think you'd get out of the house in the morning. Well, she's. she's you'd have tied your shoelaces together. Yeah, you'd have your earplugs <laughs> you'd have forgotten in. You'd have to put your trousers on. The fire alarm would be going off, and, you know, someone would left a frying pan on, the builders would be sort of like throwing you round. Yeah, I imagine and she makes you like a round of sandwiches. <laughs> well, yeah. she, she's noticed that I don't ask as many questions now. Cause like, last night was one of the first times in ages that I'd asked her something, right? What did you ask? Where's the bathroom? <laughs> no, right, do you know like I'm always thinking stuff when I'm bored, right? If it's, if it's when I'm washing up or what have you. Yeah. And uh, last night, um, she was watching uh, that Midsummer. Uh, Midsummer Murders, yeah. Midsummer Murders, right? Yeah. I don't like it, Alex, for a wish. Right? So, uh, I'm sorry, Another right. thing you've got in common, then. <laughs> no, but, do you know what I mean? Uh, but I will watch it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She really likes he it. He was so. he's watching the microwave, she's going, Carl, no, <laughs> yeah, exactly. this is the telly. This is the telly. Wait a minute, wait a minute, this chicken, this chicken's it's, gonna come I've seen this second. before, it's been before, it comes round again in a minute. <laughs> Carl, come, that's the, what's the washing machine, Carl? <laughs> so she's watching it, loving it and that, and I'm, I'm bored, cos it's just, you know, it's a boring programme. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm sort of looking through magazines that we've got. Trying to find animals without heads. And yeah. uh, it's in one of her magazines, and there's this article, right, about these I identical twins, <laughs> brothers, right, and one of them meets this girl, right, and it turns out she's got an identical... I've heard of this, this is true. Right. They get married. She's got an identical sister. Right. So they both go out. So two identical twins, male going out, going out with two identical twins, sisters. Yeah. yeah. So I was looking at it going, oh, that's, that's weird, because you see them like, they're always wearing the same cardigans and that, and that's like... But then, no, right. but if you were an identical twin, then you probably would fancy the same sort of person, wouldn't but you? But then, I was asking, she was going, Shh, it's getting near the, you know, the plot, the murderer, 
<laughs> if they had a kid, would they look the same? Yeah. Would the, would the, would well, not necessarily, not necessarily, because it, it depends on what, what genes are passed over. Even though they've got the same exact sets of genes, that, that you don't pass on all the genes, do you? If, it's 50-50, but you don't pass on exactly the same genes in each sperm, let alone with an identical twin. Yeah, but even though you don't do that, like, my brother and sister don't look like me, but no. you know they were related. Because they share, they share 50% of your and father's genes. And they talk genes. gobbledygook. Yeah. No, you share 50% of your father's genes and 50% of your mother's, but not the same 50% I I on two occasions. I think you completely lost, lost already. it. When, lost you brought, already. when you brought in the word genes, yeah, I yeah, thought you were thinking, yeah. what, what, what no, kind of No, they wouldn't necessarily. For? They wouldn't necessarily, no. They could do by Did Suzanne chance. look at you? <laughs> Like Oliver Hardy looks at Stan Laurel when he's just like nailed his hand to a wall or something. <laughs> she just, she, she went, ask Ricky tomorrow. And yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> and then turned up John Nettles. And then turned it up. Yeah. Oh, that is brilliant. I think there's a, st I heard a story once where two, um, sets of Siamese twins married. What if you fancied the one on the left? Yeah. What if one of them was having an affair <laughs> behind the other one's back? <laughs> That'd be difficult to conduct, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you better show what off, are you doing? waking up. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hey? What are you doing down nothing. there? What are you doing down there? Nothing. There's no one down here. Well, well, I, well I think there is because I can, I no. can see her sister here. <laughs> no. What's no. she doing? What's she no, doing? They just... She's covering for him. <laughs> what are you covering for him for? <laughs> He's your husband. <laughs> is my wife down there? <laughs> I read something about some Siamese twins. Go on. And, um, <laughs> one of them was saying, you know, oh, we get on each other's nerves and that. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the other one was going, we don't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know this. I ne yeah, I've never um, liked you. I've never um, liked you. One of them was going, oh, you know, I hate doing the washing up, but I'll let her do it. And, um, the, the person doing the interview said, well, why don't you help out? Just dry up and get the job done quicker. And she was like, no, no, I, I can't stand it. I prefer just to hang around there and wait for the, for the other girl yeah. to do the washing up on her own rather than help and get the job done. <laughs> sure. Just selfish. <laughs> well, I, uh, there was one set of Siamese twins. One, one had a job and the other one didn't. <laughs> That's ludicrous. Yeah. The other one was unemployed, the other one had a job. She had to go to work, she had to get up at six o'clock on a day I'm off. I'm supporting you, literally. <laughs> yeah. Then they get done off the social for sort of... <laughs> yeah, because the other one was signing on. <laughs> uh, are you living together? <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. But Feeder, just the way I'm feeling on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, uh, Steve and Carl. All right. Just having a having a whale of a time, both of them. They they love being in this room with me for two hours. They, that is their favourite part of the week, I think, isn't it? That's I, I, don't, I haven't said that, but I'm assuming they love it. <laughs> um, right, competition time. Brand new competition we come up with. Uh, my favourite we've ever done, I'll be honest. Um, and a great prize, the six cents. You get a you get a clip of a great film and then you get to keep the great film. Now, I'll just explain this competition. Um, I think Carl is a little bit of a frustrated actor. And so, by the power of technology, Carl takes the role in a film. Um, and, uh, there's a question about it afterwards. Um, this is, uh, a, a scene starring Carl Pilkington from The Sixth Sense. Hmm. Jeez, I hope nobody got hurt. Be all right. I'm very quiet. No, I'm just just thinking about stuff. So. You're mad at Mr. Play, aren't you? A little bit annoyed, to be honest. Uh, went down a storm playing the drums in Little Donkey, but. Your loss. I'd give anything to have been there. Well, you wouldn't, because you didn't, but like I say, it's your loss, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just quiet because I'm thinking about stuff, like I said. Right? I'll make a big deal out of it. What is it? Well, I, uh, I was just thinking, what would happen, right, if you put a chameleon on a mirror? How, how would it handle that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? 
Well, you're scaring me. That's scaring you. This will scare you, right? The other day, so two old men sat there having a Twix. You never see that, do you? Old fella having a Twix. You see ghosts, Cole? No, just... Just, just the old fellas having a Twix, but isn't they? So they talk to you? No. They tell you to do things? No, because they were too busy eating, but... It's not got to do. What are you looking like that for? Do you, do you think I'm some sort of freak or something? Is that, is that I would never think that about well, you. Well, Ever. No. Got it? All right. <laughs> well, well so, it's a very <laughs> chilling scene, that. <laughs> that is great. Oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> it's a very spooky scene from the film The Sixth Sense. Rick, yeah. I think you've got a question. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Carl played it wonderfully there, the role of the, uh, the child that sees weird stuff. But who played the original role? What was the name of the child actor who played the original role? It's email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. You can win a copy of The Sixth Sense. But I think we can, we can probably play it again later for those that missed it or those yeah, that caught this hand or those that need another one. reminder. Yeah, you got, yeah, get, get, get your, you know, get 15, 20 minutes, get your, um, answers in. We'll, we'll pick a lucky winner and then, uh, we'll play it again because I just, I think that we can, I think Carl can go to Hollywood with some of the things I've seen there. Mm. Absolutely okay. stunning. Absolutely Brilliant. stunning. Ricky Dotgervais at xfm.co.uk. Um, I'm going to play uh, a track now. We tried to play it a couple of weeks ago, but it jumped. So I've got a new CD of it. It's Papa Garcia, and this is La Natalie and Nusi. <laughs> Natalie and Nusi by Papa Garcia. Um, well, we've had lots of emails already. Uh, in fact, my favourite one is a suggestion of the name of that feature, specific to this today's, is the Twix Sense. Indeed. Which, uh, was great. And feel free to send in your suggestions, because we're going to try and do one a week, a classic film, with Carl in the, in the, you know, an important role. But if you want to, you know, see Carl as maybe as, uh, you know, Michael Corleone in The Godfather, so, you know, send in, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do, won't we, Carl? And don't, don't imagine that it has to be a, a male character. I imagine that you could play, for instance, Sharon Stone's role in, uh, Basic Instinct. I don't imagine it has to be a human. I mean, I'm, a, 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 I mean, an animal he might, object. He might be better suited. He'd be very good as a rock. Yeah. Or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, um, we're gonna, uh, pick up something we, we spoke about before. Um, we're gonna announce the winner and play that again, um, in, in a few minutes. But, um, uh, Carl wants to put the record straight, don't you? Carl's fed up with when he comes up with something that's a bit, a little bit fantastic and far-fetched and wrong that we take the mickey out of him. So, uh, he's brought in some hard evidence of story, haven't you? No, do you know, like, I find stuff on the internet and that, mm. right, and I come in and tell you about it and you go, that's rubbish. Yeah. And then you'll say, show your workings, mm. which I've never liked doing. No. When teachers say that, I hate that. Yeah. Because then I normally can't. <laughs> no. No. I've always he's, gone. he's just got the answers five and they go, no, I asked for the capital of China. <laughs> the answer's five. <laughs> yeah. But, right, so, we started a feature a couple of weeks ago, um, Chimpanzee, that the thing about monkeys and stuff. Let's yeah. do the, just play the jingle right. Oh, chimpanzee, that. Yeah, yeah. All right. right. We started that. That's facts about apes, isn't it? And yeah. whatever. monkeys, monkeys chimps, and so whatever. Yeah. And um, I tell you a story about um, a monkey that was in a zoo. Yeah. And um, it it got pally with the zookeeper. Right. Yes. Remember? It moved into his house, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, and didn't it ultimately have an affair with his wife. Yeah. It liked a little uh, brandy at night and a cup of tea in the morning. Then he went to work and it moved in on its wife. Yeah. Right. Now I read that in a book. Yes. Right. But then I was looking for some more monkey stuff online the other day, mm. and I found the same story. Right. From a different source. Okay. Which is always a good sign. And it's corroborated what you claimed, is it? Kind of. There you go. It's not a different source, though, is it? It's someone who read the same thing as you and printed it's it themselves. Out, I left out a fact. His name's Oliver. <laughs> what, the monkey? So I got that wrong, yeah. The monkey's called Oliver. Can you see that, Steve? Oh, yes. Right? There's do a picture wanna, of him here. Do you want to read it? Uh, do you, do you, where is this from, then? Where, I, I, was, I was looking for world famous monkeys online, and it- www.apenaut.org. <laughs> <laughs> this is someone who, in America, is who set up a, a sort of similar website to, uh, I don't know where he is, but, yeah. Okay, uh, 
He was originally brought into the US with 12 other chimpanzees, but immediately stood out as different. He learned to drink, enjoy coffee and beer, and smoke cigars. <laughs> in the evenings, he would sit on a sofa and watch television. If his caregivers were out of coffee, he would walk into the kitchen, pour a cup, and take it into the den. As he got older, he made sexual advances on the wife, and as a result was sold. I reckon it was a, a stowaway. And to, to, to not get caught, he pretended to be a monkey. Yeah. Whereas really, it was just a... That would make sense, because the final line is, he's now living in retirement in Texas. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I, I get, my only query, and I don't mean to be disrespective, is that it doesn't really give much more information. I mean, I, I mean, someone who's set up a, a website like this, I'm worried that, what I'm saying is I'm worried he's just kind of an American twin of you. Do you know what I mean? Do you see what I mean by that? There's no real hard evidence. There's no kind of dates. There's no uh, references to where it, where he was specifically or what yeah, zoo he was in. Carl Pilkinghorn. Yes. From Dallas. <laughs> Hi. We're cousins. Why do you need to know all that? The story's What there. do you mean why does he know that? Why, why not accept it? Because another fella reckons a chimp moved in on a, a, someone's wife. What I'm saying is that, that he, could be as, he could be as much of a nutter as you. Do you see what I mean? I what, what do you mean? Could be, he is? Yeah, exactly. What, and go to that much trouble of, like, yes. sorting out a website and that? You host a radio show, for goodness sake! To spout your idiocy. You see? It's not a website, it's hardly you know, anything. You've got to get a job. He was stressed yesterday, because we want to do, uh, another Chimpanzee That. Have we got a new story coming up for Chimpanzee That? Yeah, yeah. He was stressed yesterday, because he's, he says, I'm really overworked, I'm really getting fed up. He said, he said, I haven't even, um, sorted out the story um, about, uh, this monkey. He said, how overworked am I that I, I haven't even got time to sort out a story about a monkey? <laughs> you know how much I love that. Rick, do you think there's any way we could lure Oliver out of retirement to come over and produce this show? I think we probably could. <laughs> I'm uh, parched for a cup of coffee. Would you pop to the kitchen? We're gonna play a bit of Springsteen. Oh, I'm loving it. For Martin Freeman, he said, please play some Springsteen or yeah. Bowie. I'm trying to get him into Motown, but he only likes level 42. Yeah. But this is for him. Twix sense there. Um, to be fair as well, Rick, there is a question that is answerable. I think that's also a reason why people. Yeah. It, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. That's because I did it and not Carl. Probably. <laughs> exactly. I asked the question there. Yeah. Um, we're going to play it again because other people want to hear it again, and uh, then we will uh, give the winner's name, and they will win that copy of it. Carl in the sixth sense. <laughs> Jeez, I hope nobody got hurt. Stay all right? You're very quiet. No, I'm just, just thinking about stuff. So? You're mad at Mr. Play, aren't you? A little bit annoyed, to be honest. Uh, went down a storm playing the drums in Little Donkey, but your loss. I'd give anything to have been there. Well, you wouldn't, because you didn't, but like I say, it's your loss, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just quiet because I'm thinking about stuff, like I said, right? I'll make a big deal out of it. What is it? Well, uh, I was just thinking, what would happen, right, if you put a chameleon on a mirror? How, how would it handle that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Cool, you're scaring me. That's scaring you. This'll scare you, right? The other day, saw two old men sat there having a Twix. You never see that, do you? Old fella having a Twix. You see ghosts, Cole? No, just, just, just the old fellas having a Twix, boy. You think they talk to you? No. They tell you to do things? No, because they were too busy eating, but... What's that got to do? What are you looking like that for? Do you, do you think I'm some sort of freak or something? Is that, is that... I would never think that about well, you. Well, ever. No. Got it? All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. Me. And so the question was, uh, who played the original role of that kid in the car who saw strange things? And the answer is Steve. Haley Joel Osment, of course, yeah. uh, who um, is a talented young performer, but I don't think really has anything on Carl Pilkington, who I think made that scene even more chilling and yeah. more uh, atmospheric than the Definitely. original. Definitely. 
Definitely. And uh, we'll give this to, let's see, I think it's uh, Francis Marnie who's emailed in. Uh, he or she said, I don't know if it's a he or she, but uh, I, is, I is male and, and he is, no, oh, well, I, think it's I is female and he, Francis or Fran I Francis, don't know, anyway, do I? that could be a fake name, who knows. But uh, he, let's assume it's a he, he says he's a sad little nerd who, um, it was, it was his birthday yesterday and only his mum remembered, even his best friend forgot. Definitely a, definitely um, a bloke. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, uh, I can't really relate to life as a bit of a loser, a bit of a no. nerd, so I don't really know what he's talking about, but I imagine a lot of our audience do, so let's give it to him, sort of. I imagine he's a little four-eyed geek, <laughs> oh, little loser. Little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, as I look again, I notice he's not even got the name right, he's spelled it Hayley Joel Osman. Oh. Osman, but, um, so he really is pathetic, I mean, that's, what a pathetic Actually, little Actually, well, it's totally fun now, now we humiliated him, don't give him the prize, give okay. him else. Well, it's on TV tonight anyway, on ITV, no, so. No, no, well just done, fine. Says, thank you for uh, listening and uh, well done for spotting who Carl was trying to. And whatever girl you fancy at school, ask her out. Say, come back to my place, watch the Sixth Sense. Yeah. She'll love it and you'll be guaranteed a shame. Why do you assume he was at school? I don't know, because his spelling is terrible. Although I'm looking at Carl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just such a very badly put together email. I just assumed it was a kid. Right. Well, if he is a kid now and he's going through four interviews, he's probably really. I never dreamt it was a kid. I'm, really? I feel a bit bad now. Well, you thought it was a sort of 25 year old loser, yeah. even more pathetic in a way. Yeah. And now I'm worried <laughs> that, you know, you've, you've, uh, you've embarrassed, a, you know, a, a, an adolescent mm. live on, well, one of the biggest radio stations in the building. <laughs> it's not even, it's not even the biggest radio station in the building. <laughs> I true. can't believe that. It's the smallest radio station in this building. Right. Now we've done that, right? Are we doing a proper competition? Yeah. Setting up the old, uh... Rockbusters, your yeah. favourite, innit? Well, let's play a tune before. I can't, I don't think I can face that well, straight it's just away. That we've, also, we've also got... That song sounds alright. Aren't we? Uh, yeah. Another new feature. That, sound, that song sounds good. Can I just say before we play a record that, uh, we've had an email from Dickie Anderson. Dickers! <laughs> Richard oh, Anderson. Oh, Dickster, you dicky ducky <laughs> dido, are oh, ya? If you're a new uh, listener then you won't have uh, come across Richard before, but, but he loves he's, the our, show. he's our biggest fan. He's a bit of a, and he loves the show, he tapes it and listens back to it four or five times. But he, the great thing about him is he's not afraid to offer a bit of constructive criticism. <laughs> oh, well, What's he said? What's he well, said? Well, all I'm going to say to you is he said, um, is it true that companies are now getting rid of hold music and are instead using your show to irritate their customers while they're waiting on the phone? <laughs> um, I don't know. I will try to look into that, Dickie, but thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> I need direction. Teenage Fan Club on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Do keep your suggestions coming in for uh, roles that you'd like to see Carl playing in future editions of this quiz. Is, this is the most popular comedy we've ever done. Has it got a name yet? Have we come up with a name? Uh, Holly Wouldn't. Okay, brilliant. Um, well, anyway, we had some suggestions. Um, <laughs> Neil Wilson in Bedford, he suggested he'd like to see you, Carl, playing the role of Clyde the Monkey in <laughs> yeah. Every Which Way But Lose. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh, and uh, also an excellent suggestion from Lee Gridley in Essex. The obvious role for you is, of course, Dustin Hoffman as Rain Man. I, I said that, didn't I? That's perfect. That'd be great. Yeah. Just imagine going, okay, you remember? Bet two for... T yeah. Good, well, but, yeah. Well, you've lost again, yeah. Uh, that'd be fantastic. I'm worried that you, I don't know, it's a bit of a stretch, Carl. Can you play someone who's that clever? <laughs> Give it a go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do Elephant Man. <laughs> okay. Why, what sort of ideas you got for Elephant Man? Well, I don't know whether I'd be him or, like, the Doctor. Mm. What would you say if you were the Doctor? Just like, uh, oh, how do you do that? You know what I mean? How do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, can I, can you, have you seen your head? <laughs> <laughs> or he goes, I'm not an animal, and you go, wow. <laughs> it's Judging by your head, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest yeah. Gump. Yeah, do that. Yeah. It's loads, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We'll keep them going in. That's brilliant. So, uh... The competitions don't stop there, sadly. Yeah. No. Rockbusters. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> right, how about, right, we've got this other, other thing, right, this other music thing. Yeah. How about we make that part of How it? How many competitions have you got? No, well this is what I'm thinking, right? Because we can, if, you, if you're not happy with Rockbusters, if we add a little bit to it, and they love the bit I've added, then we can slowly fade it out without them knowing. That's it, do two of your Rockbusters and uh, and one of these. Right. I think Come it's on the prizes, Carl. They're the prizes. Well, yeah, let's do the prizes. Let's quickly go through them then. Yeah. Alright, what have we got here? Let's speed this up, because so I'm dropping that, off yeah, now. I think it's, it's, it's either warm in here or, or 
this isn't the most scintillating conversation we've ever had. Okay, first thing, there's a CD here. It's, uh, tracks that were sampled by, uh, <laughs> various artists, including Jay-Z, Happy Mondays, and so on. It's the original versions. That might mm. be quite good fun. Sure. I Love You, let me see, it's a number of love songs. Yeah. You've got, uh, Blue featuring Elton John on there. Yeah. Chicago, yeah. Nat King Cole. Yeah. Some great, so I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Retro Dance Masters, oh, yeah. that's another CD dance tracks, yeah. obviously, on there. Oh, it's still knocking about. The Best Air Guitar, Volume 2. Sure. Rubbish. Uh, this is quite good, though. It's Paul Whitehouse's, uh, TV show Happiness, that's the first series on DVD. Uh, we've also got Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince, you can have that in your collection, probably never watch it, but it might look like you're slightly classy and arty. And, so uh, the subtitles. <laughs> the best one hit wonders album in the world ever. You've got stuff on there like, uh, Nana, 99 Red Balloons, yeah. and, uh, M's Pop Music. So not oh, that yeah. bad a selection, actually, this week. He's cut out some of the chaff. Right. Yeah, okay. Sorry, right, here we right. go, Rockbusters. Rockbusters, first one. Uh, we'll do two of these, and I'll play something in a minute. Right, uh, first one. Um, the Australian picks two blokes. What? The Australian picks two blokes. The Australian picks two blokes. The initial? Yeah, the initial E, right? And the second one, that builder's a bit- I've got that already. It's annoying. <laughs> okay. That- that builder is a bit cute. He's a bit cute? Yeah. Alright. And that's B-T. B-T? B-T. That builder's a bit cute. Yeah. And the Australian picks two blokes, E. And then what I'm gonna do now is play some sound effects that make up a song, and you've got to guess what the song is. Go on then, right? just do it and then the show on the Here we go, here we go. There you go. So what song's that? It's yeah. sort of an XFM okay, track well song, that's great. Email so, so only. First, sorry, I should just clarify, though, the first two are, uh, band names or artist names, but that's the title of the track that we want there. Yeah, that's, that's right. It's so right. confusing. No one's ever going to figure this out. They will, though. They will. They'll do it. Ricky dot at Hey, listen. Dot we've got the best fans in the world, Steve. <laughs> Remember that. Remember that. <laughs> Without them, we ain't nothing. Yeah. So good luck to you. <laughs> Should I pick a track, Steve. Uh, I'd love to. I want to wear some monkey magic. I want to wear some chimpanzee. That I want to wear some aping around. <laughs> we've got that still to come. Oh, about, I really. can't believe it. We've got rockbusters. <laughs> that film sounds good, and we've got all oh, look at him up in Hollywood, <laughs> and we've got. Like, oh, monkey me, monkey you. We got Gibbon on the horn. <laughs> Jesse Nayland, this is a great track. Coldplay, Clocks on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Right, give me some monkey magic, Carl. Hang on, you better do the jingle, ain't you? Oh. Oh, chimpanzee that! Oh, you like this one. Um, what I've found is, uh, found out, like, a lot of monkeys' names. Like, that's how I found out about Oliver. Yeah. What do you mean you found out a lot of monkeys' names? Well, there's uh, a lot of monkeys out there, and you think they're just called monkey and what have you, but they're all given names, right? So this, this one that I found about, bit of a weird name anyway, it's actually called Crap, its name, right? And... So it... They, they, they're not born with those names. It's not like their parents give them those names. You know, they're just yeah, chipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this one, right? And um, it's called crap. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right, but do you know what it's famous for? What crap? Yeah. No Go one. Is it involved with this show? <laughs> it's um, the first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> Yeah, again, I will say not by choice. There is no way that a chimp would go down to Camden Lock and go, uh, are you a registered tattooist? I am, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's the cleanest, yeah. Go, okay, um... Can I have a look through your book? Can I have a look through your book? Um, I'm looking for something quite gothic, but, um, uh, I'd, I'd like, you know... What's your name? Crap. Oh, I'm not sure I can do that because you're not drunk, are you? I have another drink. I have another drink. I've had some, I've had some, uh, um, bongo and that's all. <laughs> uh, but no. What are you talking about? The first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> what are you talking about, There's Carl? gotta be more information. Don't tell me you're leaving it there. There's gotta be more information. That was it. And then I read it thinking, well, that's weird because that means there's loads of monkeys with tattoos on their head. If that's the first one. No, it could be still the only one. The first and only. Yeah, but would they report that? Well, they, you what do you mean would they report it? This isn't the Washington Post you're reading. <laughs> this is mentalists who do websites about themselves every day. Oh, I, 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 what? There's got to be a third Why act is that to that news? Story. Why is that news? What, how did you come across that? Well, you, you First nut monkey with tattoo head, W. I mean, what are you talking about? 
But why did it have its name tattooed on its head? I know. Didn't, it didn't say, it didn't say that. I, I mean, I, yeah, I know, it's mad. But, <laughs> but he didn't say why. Was that enough for you though? Did you feel satisfied after having read that? Did you not have a- I mean, that, there's no way that that is in the Guinness Book of Records. There's no way uh, that that is, uh, excited in the Guinness Book of Records. I just read it as like, what a weird name for a monkey. And then, <laughs> ooh, you won't have that on your head. What and, would be a good name for a monkey? I don't know, uh, anything but that, really. Yeah. Uh. Dave. Ted. <laughs> but, what do you think of that then? Well, I don't know what to think about it, cause I don't know what- I don't know what you're telling me. I don't know- I don't know that it's news, I don't know that it's true. I- I- I mean, I don't know where to start with that. Is that all you found? You found a, something about a tattoo? No, I'll tell you right, when I was searching for stuff on monkeys, right? Yeah. I was searching around, like I always do, looking, finding information, right? Yeah. And, um, found out- are, are you aware of the Iceman? The Iceman? Yeah. Go on. Right. And to me, the monkey thing was more- What's the Iceman? Oh, the man that was found in the ice. So you're aware the of The man. Right, yeah. It's Ricky, do you Not know about the monkey, the Iceman? Though. No, no, I know, but I just was looking at, like, info. Right. The 5,000 year old fella, it was preserved in a, in a glacier. That one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you find that more fascinating than the monkey? Well, I, I know that it's true. Yeah, it is true, but do you find it more fascinating? Well, simply <laughs> because it's true I find it more fascinating. I can't act on some- uh, uh, if someone- uh, anything that's true is more fascinating. But, you see, what I get from the monkey thing, yeah. you go, oh, I wonder- wonder if it was happy about that, and- <laughs> But you accept it straight away, you accept that that is true and interesting, and I don't know what that is. I mean, to me it sounds like a bit of cruelty towards animals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you know, that, 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 uh, I mean, if that's true, it's disgusting to tattoo uh, a monkey's head. It's disgusting. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no way, that's what I'm saying, it doesn't do a- if a monkey, if they, if they reported that a monkey, um, went in and got a tattoo, <laughs> and chose it itself, and then was like, riding a Harley Davidson down <laughs> Camden, I'd go, that is incredible, but I'd really want to see it on the news, and it mustn't be anywhere near the 1st of April. You know what I mean? I think you've just blown next week's. <laughs> <laughs> Letter to Hermione, David Bowie of Space Oddity album, XFM 104.9. See, do, 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 oh, I don't know where, I, I, I thought you'd sort of learnt a little bit, Carl, what is a, an interesting fact and what might just be a mentalist online. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Do you know what point we're making here? What, why the truth is so much more fat, even a little bit, even something that's just, uh, you know, mild, but is definitely the truth, is so much more interesting that, than just wish fulfilment of truth. To me, if it starts with there was this ghost, right, it's not interesting. You could say anything. There was this ghost that could turn custard into wine. It doesn't matter. There was this ghost that had nine heads. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There was this <laughs> you know Carl's looking at you going, there's a ghost that can turn custom into <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter what you say after that, there's a ghost that can uh, uh, swallow alligators whole. The, f the premise means it's not true to me. Do you know what I mean? It's like people say, you know what, uh, God, right, he's incredible, I gotta stop you there. It, uh, the fact that he can make the earth in seven days, well, you've lost me already. Do you know what I mean? Where if someone says something like, you know, a cockroach can live, five days without a head, that's interesting. That's interesting. Right. Do you think when you die, they say, you're a ghost, this is gonna amaze you. You yeah. can go and you can spook people out. Yeah. Do you like custard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come over no, here. No. Well, if you don't, oh, you don't. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you like wine? Of course I do. <laughs> oh, you are gonna love it. Yeah? You're gonna love me. You're gonna, gonna love it. Yeah. I've lost all my loved ones. Yeah. Uh, do, do you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's what your sort of beliefs are based on. Mine are sort of on, I suppose logic and, and, and science and so, so I'm amazed by the world and, and- So the Iceman, why, why does that amaze you? What's, what's like, ooh? Well they, they, they found some, uh, part of our preserved past. You know, it's interesting, I, I, you know, again, I'm amazed by anthropology and evolution. Yeah. Go it's on. just that, that, that line on its own like that, you know, they found an Iceman is great, but then it went on and on and it's going on about, you know, they've had to get different people involved to find out how old, how old it was. Because first of all, the story started off, right, 
an old fellow on holiday somewhere. Uh, where did they find it? In Sweden or something? And he was walking in the hills. And, he was uh, walking? In the hills. In the hills? Was he a transvestite? In the mountains. Oh, right. in the hills. Yeah. Yeah. So he's walking, walking about, and he sees this body in the in the snow, and he thinks, oh. So he calls the calls the police up, and they come and have a look, and he goes, oh yeah, it's probably a murder. So then they di dig it up and find out he's got hold of a spear in his hand. Right, and he's and he's dressed like Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Right. And they realise it's probably not a recent murder. Right. His knuckles are drugging on the floor, he's <laughs> yeah. a Neanderthal man, they yeah. think, hang on, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> but when they found out, hang on, it's an old thing. It's an old thing! Can it? If it was a murder recent, then you'd go, hang on, how did this happen, who does he belong to? Yeah. Well, the chances are whoever murdered him is also dead. Five thousand years ago, probably, but, uh, yeah. So leave it. Just bury it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a murder investigation. No, but they are. It's not Quincy going, this is really, this was before my time. <laughs> it's no, not that, a murder investigation. Yeah, yeah just, just one thing bothers me, sir. Um, just one final thing. My wife loves you. <laughs> but, um, this guy. This that's, guy. That's how they were Why would he have a spear <laughs> yeah. and a leopard skin? <laughs> I, I just can't, I can't get over this. What are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. What, what are you saying? What are you saying? Right, shut up everybody. What are you saying? You've got one chance now, you've got to ask me a question, and I will answer it to the best way, but what are you saying? I'm what is saying, your question? Right, you probably spent a load of money trying to That's not a question. Out. That's not a question. Well, let me tell you what I'm saying, right? They're probably spending a load of money finding out stuff about this fella who died. And even if, even if he wasn't murdered, he'd be dead by now anyway. So get over it, right? <laughs> Three thousand years ago, he, he died, mm. right? So then they start messing about with it. Saying, well, how did he die? Well, it, it doesn't matter. It was it was ages ago. Then he start digging his belly open, seeing uh, last meal that he ate. Yeah. Oh, he ate seeds and leaves. Well, no surprise, really. <laughs> he was now else around again, spending more money. Someone's been paid money to sort that out. Then they bury him, and then said, "Hang on a minute, are, are you sure that he died by like a spear? Let's dig him up again." So they dig him up again. And find some splinter or Sorry, something. Sorry, I don't believe they buried him. They did. Well, in some sort of fancy coffin so everyone can see him. But for me, that is more wasteful than sorting out something that's, you know, like someone who's ill. Sort, sort something out, you know, something. Yeah, they, 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 sorry, it's not either or. They don't, they didn't pull a doctor out of surgery. <laughs> exactly. Like There's not an old man in a bed in the yeah. corner or somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ted, oh, what are you doing? I'm just, I'm just giving this bloke a, a stat clear. <laughs> no, look, we found an old fella in a skit. Okay, I, okay, you yeah. take over. It's not either or, Carl. What are you talking about? It's scientific research. But don't you see why this is fascinating? It gives us an insight into how we lived 3,000, 5,000 years ago. That's an incredible historical document. The what seeds. if it was your equivalent? What if it was like the Carl of the time and there's people, uh, you know, ghosts now through that going, oh God, you don't believe, don't, I, I don't believe it, they don't dug up Carl. They think we're all like that. Oh no, don't, oh no, they're going into his brain now. They're looking at how his brain works, we're gonna get such a bad rep. Oh well, dear. Well, each to their own, if you like it, I just thought it was a bit of a... a waste of money. Bit of, bit, a little bit of a waste. Yeah, okay. But, uh, there you go. Anyway, we've, uh, will we give out the answers to Rockbusters next? If we yeah. must. Yeah. It sometimes stuns me. Mm. Sometimes I, I'm taken aback, do you know what I mean? But what worries me, it, it, what worries me is if one day aliens do visit... <laughs> I'd love and that. they come down, yeah. But what worries oh, me is they might bump into. What if they bump into you? What if they bump into you and they think that you represent mankind? And they oh, go up and they they start goodness. another planet. They can act. They say oh. we'll ask you three questions, and if you answer them correctly, we will not blow up your planet. Yeah. We'd be doomed. Or, it depends. It depends what they ask you, don't they? What if they said? What if they said? Right, Carl. What's the weirdest thing ever found in China? I say every Chinese kid. And they go okay, right. Okay, interesting. Two, all right. What um, don't you see anymore? What do you see an old bloke doing? Don't see an old fella e eating a switch. Yeah, and they say, um, uh, what if they asked you, what's across the road from you when you're washing up? Uh, well, there's a few, three things. Do you just want one of them? No, yeah. I want all three. You want all three? There was a Chinese kid dancing about in his underpants. Yeah. There was a bouncer every yeah. night getting ready to go to work. And the third one, the old woman reading a book, the same book. And they night. go, right, your planet's safe. <laughs> see, see. Back in the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are a superior race. <laughs>
Nearly done. Let's play Rockbusters. All right. Um, first one was um, the Australian picks two blokes. Uh, the initial was E. The answer there, Eminem. <laughs> M and M. <laughs> All right. The second one. Um, that builder is a bit cute. The initials there were B T. That was Bonnie Tyler. <laughs> and then we introduced a new bit to the show. Um, that song sounds all right. These were the effects you heard. <laughs> and uh, that was Prodigy. Smack my bitch up. Who are you punching there? And could I just say, no animal was harmed in the taping of that effect. There you go. No. Right. So have you got a winner? Yes, uh, Rob Preston from Croydon, he has got all three correct, and he wins a that selection bag of, of shite. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, so good luck, enjoy that, uh, Rob. Yeah, if you can. Yeah. Sell it. Record and tape exchange within <laughs> 40 minutes of receiving it, I imagine, <laughs> one good album that he likes. <laughs> Bob's in on the tracks for all this bag of shite, please. <laughs> <laughs> Should we play a record? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, can I just ask now, what are we thinking with Rockbusters? Are we sticking with this or are we- cause I really thought we'd cancelled it. What about, what about that things? format we've just on where there's like two- This is another off-air discussion, I think. Well- no, I just feel the listeners should be able to contribute. They do. Yeah. They phone and say, the show's rubbish, mm. move on, um, can- can we experiment on Carl? I'm yes. a doctor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to tattoo on would Carl. Would like to tattoo? Yeah. Oh dear. Well, Carl, have you got any tattoos? Have you- have you ever thought about that? Any kind of piercings? Don't like the idea. Don't no. mess- don't mess with your body and that. Okay. He doesn't like the human body, he's scared of it. But I told you, didn't about me uncle, oh, Tattoo Stan, we've talked about that, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> tattoo tattoo Stan, Stan, yeah. Yeah, he's- he's got loads. And I- yeah. I think now he sort of, you know, looks in the mirror and thinks, oh, what have I done? Yeah. But then again, so do you. I was <laughs> telling, like, telling Ricky before about someone who had a tattoo. Uh, it's a bit horrible, really, isn't it? I don't know. I can't remember the t the skin thing. Oh God, yeah. You're not going to tell us it again. I'm, I'm hoping it's not true because it's from Carl, but it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, because there's no paranormal or animals <laughs> <laughs> acting like humans involved, I think it might be true. It's a fellow who kept his dad's tattoo. Yeah, he just sort of when his dad passed away, he got the skin off and put it in a frame. Who'd you ask to do that? Oh, man, a lie. Uh, Ashes to Ashes, that's- Sorry, um, before we- Barry, you don't- <laughs> Before we come in, I've got a Stanley do, knife. Do you do any other services? <laughs> like what, my son? I'll just- just pop- pop some of him in a- in a jar for me. I'm sorry? <laughs> Uh, how do you? I mean, that I is. I bought this clip frame from IKEA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can just yeah. slip that between. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Yeah. Um. Oh, that I, think, is I imagine right. your father is a man who's probably appalled by the idea of tattoos, earrings, things like that. I imagine he's quite an old school gent. He's, he's never sort of said anything, but uh. If you came back with an earring, what would you have said when you were a youngster? I never saw him that much as a kid, so I don't think he'd have noticed. My mum would have said, "What have you done that for?" Yeah. Our kid had a tattoo. And, uh, and, a, and an earring. Sorry, is this the one that took, uh, borrowed a tank from the army to go and get a packet of ads? Yeah. Wow, well, there you go. We must tell that story again next week. For yeah. those that are fairly new listeners, that's got to seem tantalising. Yeah. Your brother once drove a tank down to the local shops to buy some cigarettes. Absolutely true. Yeah. It's an extraordinary story. But that's it. We don't it was that other auntie you told me about in the week. Not Auntie Nora, the one that farted for five minutes, but there's another auntie you talked about. How many aunties got, have you got? I haven't really got another auntie. I've got me, me brother. Yeah. Who I haven't seen in ages. Yeah. My sister I hadn't seen for about twelve years, then I saw her again, and then she got fed up because I said Oh, you had a new kid and you went with her all the same. I've seen one, I've seen them all. Yeah. Why are you saying that to your sister? Your sister, you haven't seen her for how long? I hadn't seen her for about twelve years and then for some reason I met her in a car park in Wales. Right. <laughs> and um <laughs> It's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> yeah. And um she got- she got in the back of the car and she said, Oh, I wanna show you something, right? And uh, she got this picture out and said, Look at that. And it was one of my new nieces and nephews. It was her, her, her daughter, boy or, or her son. Yeah, yeah whatever. And uh, she said, "Look at that." And so, and I sort of said, "Well, there's no point showing it me. All babies look the same." Don't there's me. no point in showing it me. It just takes two seconds of your life to go. Oh, lovely! Yeah, right. That's all you have to do. If it was a first, yeah, I'd say, "Oh, I'd show a bit of interest, even though." Do you, I wasn't the, do you think the novelty wore off for her with the second kid, third kid, <laughs> sixth kid? <laughs> yeah, I think even she should be bored of looking at pictures of babies. Kind of a woman, is she? And can I get her phone number? <laughs> <laughs> 
Is that it then? <laughs> Play a tune. Have we got, is this, is this yeah, it? Have we, have we got, got a record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Go well, on. I forgot to bring in a song for the ladies this week, so I thought I'd play a song for people who enjoy the work of Deep Purple. <laughs> <laughs> That'll run and run. <laughs> <laughs> it's Deep Purple, see you next week. <laughs> Bye.